What's up, everybody? The conversation you're about to hear is from a live stream I did with Matt Landman, great guest of the show. He's been on multiple times. You probably know who he is, Kim Trail activist, and well, just all around amazing activist. And we also talked to Dylan Sococcio. And Dylan is a great author. He's written the Spirit World series that I've talked about a lot lately and been very interested in. And he also wrote a fiction series, I guess it's ongoing, called Tale of Anora that I'm just now getting into. Anyway, I wanted to give you this pre-intro description of what you're about to get into because it was a live stream. There were some technical difficulties. The sound quality isn't what I would love it to be if I was like in a perfect world and I could control everything, but you can't control everything. Just want to let you know, despite any sound quality issues because of the tech difficulties we had, this conversation is worth sticking through and I hope you enjoy it. Much love and enjoy the show. First, like, you know, and then followed by W.A. Spearwa. Hmm. So that's kind of interesting. Spear, Sparrow, maybe related to flight. Ooh. Cool. All right, uh, guys, we did it. We are now finally live. <laughs> we are actually welcome. online on the Internet. People can start to check it out. Only 23 minutes late. No big deal, but totally awesome. We managed to get it going. Y'all. Exact opposite of fashionable because <laughs> you know I barely taken a shower today. That's about it. All right, so, guys. Well, at least you managed to do that, and I had managed to set up a really cool background and titles and stuff for this video. But it, uh, you know, reality decided that that wasn't exactly how the stream was going to go down. It's all good. We're trying out new things, trying out new software. But what is important is that we've got two amazing. Fiery Truth Warriors with us, Matt Landman and Dylan. Let me give it a shot on your last name. Uh, Sicaccio? Is that close? Close. In Italian, it'd be Sicoccio. Uh, we say in, in America, Sicoccio, Sicoccio, Uh One of my grandfather's brothers added an A to the end of the name instead of the O. So, Sicoccio, Sicoccio. Whatever you want to say. <laughs> yeah, so welcome to the show. It's, hey, it's, it's, not, it's not my name. So, you know, it's, it's someone else's name. I don't know. Yeah, the, and, the and, last names are, are uh, a whole conversation in themselves. But Matt, Matt's got a cool last name. Matt Landman. What's up, dude? Welcome back. Literally. Hey, thanks. And actually, my ancestors were Italian as well, Dylan. We were Sicilian. And then oh, when nice. we came over, yeah, I guess when we came to Ellis Island, they just translated it and said, screw your last name. So that's well, what we're I on, we're, we're on the land and we're men. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, interestingly enough, if you have, if we're looking to, uh, there's uh, cathedrals and stuff that are to marry now but they were built on cathedrals to athena so like places like syracuse and sicily is, there's greek there too same with like a lot of southern italian you know it's the same it's the same people for the most part so a lot of us like we have greek blood in us. we think we're italian a lot of us are greek like even my one of my family's names means from troy so fun fact to look into <laughs> fascinating hey dylan where are you at where are you located uh, Los Angeles, basically uh, Satan's asshole. <laughs> yeah, that's where I first I first moved there when I moved from the East Coast. I started up. I thought you know I thought uh, L.A. was going to be just like New York, like park your car, get on the subway or whatever. It you was mean not... park your car, get on the parkway? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing like I thought it was going to be. I ended up down in San Diego, and now I'm at the top of the state, up in Arcata and Humboldt County, nice. but um. Have you guys been getting the brownouts and whatnot from the PG and Evil and whatnot? I have not lost anything. Uh, okay. I live on I live on the west side, kind of like the like kind of like west West LA area. So, right on. 
I haven't had any issues. But it's interesting. So you lived in New York uh, first? Oh, uh, no. That's, that's I, the same I, path. Did I, I thought... I uh, I no I did not I thought it was going to be like New York I grew up in DC I grew up in DC area actually and uh, went to Virginia Tech I grew up in Virginia but just right outside DC I had a girlfriend in the Bronx I had a girlfriend in the Bronx during 9/11 that went to Pace University right there like right next to the Back World up. Trade Centers It's crazy uh, I was actually going to go there and I really up, I, I went yeah well because I, I got in there. And I also got into Hofstra University, so I went to Hofstra. Cool. And uh, yeah. Pace got not, you know, it's crazy. That I mean, I, that was that was I was that was my second weekend in in New York was nine eleven. Oh wow! Yeah, chance. So Pace University is like this skyscraper, and on one floor you'll have classes, and on one floor you'll have dorms, and on one floor you'll have cafeteria. And if you look out the window, it's like the World Trade Center, or it was. You know what I'm saying? And so um, I had people, I had friends in that building when everything went down and everyone was so worried and what have you. We'll get the show going in a second, but I just want to say, Dylan, it was amazing reading your, your book, brother, because of everything in there, including 9-11 and the banking cartel and the breakdown of the language and spirituality and all this stuff. I really thought it was like this camaraderie, um, bringing all of like the truthers together kind of like the yeah. solidarity book. It was like a book of solidarity where like I'm flipping through it and it was like, if you don't get what I'm saying, then figure it out because, you know, the truth is evident. I'm just here to like bring it to you, you know? And I've got all these words, like, like I could quote the book and whatnot, but since we we're on the 9-11 tip for a second, I just want to say like, it was so neat to see something all inclusive where someone's just bouncing around from 9-11 to all of these little triggers where I, like, I, I could literally sit down and have a conversation with you, brother, and it would be like we were friends for years already. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think, you know, I think the whole point of the work was to, you know, hard, one of the hardest things is talking to people about this stuff. And so I think the books would be a great book club idea. For people. You know, it's, it's to bring people up to speed without them having to sacrifice the decade and a half that you know and the experience and the suffering that most of us have to go through to even learn this stuff you know so it was just to bring people up to speed and that's it is the truth does unify more than it divides but first it is kind of destructive it destroys everything you thought you knew and it's you go through the same like phases of like a uh, like kind of like the stages of death you know there's that first like denial stage like oh everything's fine and then you know you start getting to that alex jones phase where like they're turning the freaking frogs gay and like start flipping out and then eventually you kind of settled in and accept it and you start focusing on the conscious solutions like what you're doing we don't have to live in fear we don't have to live in scarcity we can create abundance and live in harmony with each other and um we don't need to play their game we can just walk away and be on the land man <laughs> yeah i love it this is awesome you know i really like the concept that truth is Apotheo you have to do apotheosis to get to the truth. That's how I've always heard it described. Other people have tried to tell me the definition of that word isn't what I'm about to say, but whatever. This is what I mean by this word. And it's the negative understanding of truth. Freedom works the same way. Uh, basically, like you can understand what truth is the same way you can understand what your rights are, which is that it's <laughs> you have to just delete all the things that it's not. And that's how you can know it. There's so many things that it's your right to do that you couldn't list them all, but it's only a few things that are against like natural law or universal law for you to engage in. And the same goes for truth. It's everything, but all the things that you try to put it in a box and define it as, it's not that. <laughs> hmm. Well, I love interesting. That. Yeah, and, and, and going back to that axiomatic sense, or whatever, you can do that with oftentimes people want to know the difference between right and wrong. And there's so many available options in natural law, what your right is. And you have to look at it like that. Sometimes it's not about categorizing what is right. It's about, does my action cause harm? And if the answer is no, then it's your right. But you could never make a list of everything that you can do that's uh, moral. It's easier to look at it in the sense that you just said. It's without, you know, it's, uh, finding, you know, looking at it from, does it cause harm or not? And if it doesn't cause harm, it's your right. Yeah. And in life, we basically get inundated with all these beliefs and spend 
like at least if we're conscious and self-aware, we spend the rest of that life whittling away all the stuff that we thought was true that isn't <laughs> until you get to a more pure representation of reality in your mind that aligns with that which is. I love that. And hey, uh, Chance, I think your audio might be just a little hot. You might want to turn it down just a tiny bit. Yes. But I have this um, little paragraph. I want to read this because, okay, first of all, we're talking about truth, right? And truth is this amazing abstract yeah. concept. And I Coming was in. really tackling the concept of truth in January because on the, I was on the cusp of giving this, this little speech in February. And I wanted to give the intro to my speech talking about this age of falsehood that we're in. And how that there is a world of polarity and the opposite of falsehood, I was thinking was truth. But that's like an introductory kind of kindergarten level to explain truth, right? Let me just read this little bit of it. And when you start to learn about polarity, up, down, left, right, and all this stuff, it's something about the realm that we're in. It exists here. But yeah. truth is above that, right? Let's just read this and, and we can discuss. Polarity is an observable phenomenon or mechanism of natural law where everything is dual and opposites are identical in nature, though seemingly different in degree. But as truth is absolute, all paradoxes can be unified, such as the case with good and evil, light and shadow, entropy and entropy, spiritual and material, animalistic and angelic nature, etc. These are nothing more than the dualistic nature of the sine wave, the natural, ethereal energy that composes all matter. The moment resistance is removed from the plane of effects is the moment the wave and thus the construct collapses. This is the way out. As Chiron last teaches, resistance is assistance. So, okay, first of all, Dylan, some of these <laughs> chapters or sentences or paragraphs that I was like, I've been reading your book and it's amazing. Some of this stuff I have to like take a step back and I'm like, some of it has been things that I like processed and channeled years ago, but couldn't put it into words, for instance. And I can go all over the place with this, but I really like your analysis of truth and looking at it as a bigger picture thing. You know, we got caught, we get caught up in like, what is right? What is wrong? Who should I vote for? You know what I'm saying? It's like they, they polarize these arguments that they, the infamous say, they polarize these little arguments and get us in our little, our little fighting uh, you know, two-sided little thing where the bigger picture it needs to be seen where we shouldn't even be involved in these little left-right paradigms or whatever they may be. You know what I'm saying? I think it's really fascinating. I appreciate you bringing that up. Thank you so much. It's, a, it's an honor to even, uh, you know, have those words, those compliments. Um, and for people who want to look more into that, um, that's some of, a lot of this stuff is coming from the Hermetic Brotherhood. And so, and, you know, Hermetic is based on Hermes, you know, which we, I guess in English, we say Hermes, right? But Hermes, you know, before that, he was um, Thoth, Anubis. Um, they're all the same archetype. There's actually an archetype that bridges them called Hermenubis. And uh, that led to the Roman Mercury. And uh, it's, it's also ultimately the conductor of souls, the messenger of the gods. And so these mystery schools teach this stuff. And so, it's not necessarily, you know, like, it's definitely not my work, but I'm helping to try to bring it to something a little bit more digestible. And the, and the truth, people, because of the way we're taught, we're often taught to go into all these, like, philosophical thought experiments with everything. And the reality is the truth just is. It's what is. And what was manifested what is so everything that is in this world is the truth regardless we might have different perceptions of it but the truth itself is just there and in all of this is you know good and evil are all part of it whatever you want to call those conceptual ideas you know i i try to not get caught up in that and just look at moral or immoral is it is it a right or is it a wrong the more we do wrong behavior the more we're going to program slavery the more we do right behavior the more freedom we're going to program and that, you know, a lot of that, I can give thanks to like Mark Passio for kind of like raising me on that end. Back in, like he had this amazing podcast back in like the like 2008, 2009. Yeah, I listened to every episode of the OG show. <laughs> it it oh, raised yeah. me too, I could say that. that so what on earth is happening? Yeah, classic yeah. stuff, yeah. guys. Uh, that's something to give yourself uh, months and months of of uh, great learning if you're new to the concept of natural law. 
but there's there's a lot of ways to learn natural law and it's basically if you get that core principle of like is something right or wrong at its base level between me and, and whoever else that's pretty much the gist of it and the rest of it is just like theory crafting <laughs> but it's all good stuff to know especially Passio teaches the methods of mind control manipulation, the basics, and that's super helpful. It uh, allows you to, it, it really allows you to become more immune and going with psychic or uh, symbolic literacy that you can learn from work like yours, Dylan. Symbolic literacy and understanding the methods of manipulation, those two things combined give you like a black belt in psychic self-defense. And it's a... <laughs> All of a sudden, it's like putting on the truth glasses from They Live, which is something I figure we'll probably talk about They Live a little bit tonight because Matt's got this killer truth box of, of movies and books. And I'm positive that's in there. And I watched it twice in the in the last month, uh, which was my first time seeing it. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to kick it back to you, Dylan, because, uh, you know, I was going on about the symbolic literacy. And that's really what you do in, in spirit world and um, the... It's funny that you brought up Herman Ubus because I was just thinking about that today. And today is Wednesday. And by the. Lord yeah. Yeah. He's Lord in Jim. Exactly. He's this. You've had. It's all. It's all the same. Um, uh, it, or the same archetype of the sun in different aspects. Um, and so the, the when you look at all of the occult knowledge, it's all conceptual. But it's based on natural world observations. And this was how they encoded knowledge back in the day, because they didn't have the recording instruments that we have. So you have to create these allegories to encode survival skills, if you will, stuff that is vital to the survival of your civilization. And the beauty of knowing it, going back to like what you were talking about, the literacy is, is it going to do anything for you? No, but going back to the apophatic sense, when you can recognize the symbolism and then you become unhexable. So when you see these creatures trying to like uh, seed your mind with these lies and you see that they're encoding occult symbolism, you know, they're perverting what, you know, is called the sacred science or the astrologos, whatever you want to call it. They're perverting that and using that like in a creepy, degrading way as a control mechanism. And one of the, um, you know, for example, the second they called the, I, we're going to say the Wuhan Wiggle. You guys know what I'm talking about? Uh, oh, you could call it the beer, uh, the beer bug. I mean, they might already have these Cerveza, things on. Sick <laughs> I like the Wuhan Wiggle because when we first started paying attention to this, all the videos were coming out of China and it was all middle-aged people and they were having seizures and dropping dead. And it was like, what the fuck is that? And they were saying it was a virus, yada, yada, yada. Well, what's the first thing they, they called it? Corona. And that's the crown, right? And the crown comes from what they would say, you know, Saturn, Father Time, but it goes back to Kronos, right? And the root word of that is K-R-N, which in Hebrew is Keren, right? And then so you can see they're using all this Saturn symbol. Keren means horn and also radiance. And that symbolism comes from India because the horns, what do you see on Jupiter? or pan, they represent sun symbolism, radiance of the sun. You see it on the monuments in Egypt. And what you're looking at is encoding of that archetype. You see it, the Ren Quran, the Quran. That's why the Kaaba is the giant black square in Mecca, right, that they're going around. That's Kronos symbolism. That's why you see the cube symbolism, Saturn. The You know, that 3D cube is found in the middle of Solomon's seal, or what they would call the Star of David today. And then if you un if you fold the crucifix back up, it folds into the box. So you can tell how they're all the same um, symbols. So when you see them laying off that symbolism in a psychological operation, I called this thing fake as fuck from the from day one. I said it was phony. And sure enough, you look at the papers, they released four papers in the beginning of this crisis, and all four people got back to the to the inquiries. They never purified the virus. So you can't even get to the first step of the scientific method in determining whether this thing is real or not, because they never purified, isolated, and biochemically analyzed the virus. So if you don't have a virus, then everything else based off of that is fake or fraudulent. 
And that's power of sorcery. Now look at all around you. These people covering their face that do absolutely nothing. I mean, I have a 95 mask. Even those don't stop, stop me in the particles or what they would say would be the exosomes or the viruses. So you have a whole nation depriving themselves, destroying their health because breathing in your own CO2 and your own bacteria is toxic. You have these people who are terrified. They social distancing. They're literally destroying our society and everybody's going along with it because they're fucked up here and they don't know logic and they can't. And because they don't understand this symbolism, they don't recognize it. They just trust authority. And so that's why the symbolism is important. Man, there's so much there. Because we wouldn't be in the situation we're in if people knew. Well, it. let's just throw one more thing about the situation out there, which is... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go on. No, no, Rance or what? No, it's, it's great. <laughs> go on, Rance, anytime. But I just want to say uh, it's come to light that it... Well, you know, I don't want to monopolize the money. I got to get the money. <laughs> what do you think about the $2 trillion added to the national debt imaginary fake-ass currency that... Uh, the United States is using. I mean, that's literally all the debt that it accumulated in its entire history just got added to it in one year. I, I can't end well. Trust the plan. <laughs> hey, guys. I'm wake up, waking up in a fucking concentration camp. That's where that plan is. I was thinking of you guys when I saw the San Francisco newspaper the other day, especially you, Dylan. So I grabbed it and I'd like to uh, show you the front page. This is the San Francisco Chronicle. Okay. okay. And okay. So first off, you guys, what Dylan is saying Chron is once you, start, Chron once you start to see the writing on the wall, it makes it laughable, right? Show them. Once show the newspaper then. About, yeah, I'm going to talk about it. Oh. Dude. We're going to talk about it a lot. Okay. But first, I'm like, I'm like breaking it down. So like, when I first realized the occult symbology between behind the Starbucks logo. Okay, this is like introductory elementary of this occult symbology stuff. But when you realize it, and you realize what you were subject to before, you laugh at it all. Because the truth literally sets you free. It's just like, it's funny, it's laughable, but it's so easily translated once you can learn how to decipher it. And these books like this, I highly recommend this book, and it's a series of three, okay? Spirit World, but spelled like that, World, by Dylan, right there, the Definitions, okay, you can get this online really easily, and it's a series of three, but you start with this one, and like, you can just, you can flip it to the, to any paragraph and, and learn a lot, so either way, we're deciphering things, and when these codes are presented to millions oh, of people, so. <laughs> okay, millions and millions of people see this. All right. And this headline, not I'm only is it talking you. about, okay, so here's the headline. Heat wave rolls in for long cell. Okay. And then it shows record breaking heat waves are going to cause fire and stuff like that. And then it says in the first paragraph, the heat wave that steamrolled into California Friday, uh, by all appearances, is the beginning of a potentially dangerous hot cell, the demon child of climate change. So now we're talking about climate change. <laughs> Experts say this will grip the entire West and it will worsen the impact of the coronavirus pandemic. Okay. So all here, we've got the word cell, we've got the word demon and climate change and coronavirus, you guys, all in the front page. But millions of people see this in their subconscious as they walk by. They don't even have to buy the paper. This is in those little glass. You know, our subconscious is so strong. You can be walking down the street on your iPhone and you pick this up. And then over here, court, ban, states, whatever, whatever. This is now, this is a big deal for California. We used to not be able to get that much ammunition. They're letting us arm up because we're going to war, you guys. It's crazy. So either way, I'd like to hear what you think. I mean, I kind of already broke it down. But what do you think about this? And I think that this spell will lead to, I mean, and these temperatures are record-breaking. And guess what's after this spell? Fires, you guys. Fires. California is about to light up. California is going to light up. And I think, and then I'll pass it over and we can, I'll pull this up if you guys want to see one more time. I think that this mask thing globally is a satanic ritual and yeah. the sacrifice, the sacrifice is California, yo. It's going to be nuts. Like they're about to really light up California and all these things 
that, I mean, not to be like, I've been talking about it, but all these things that we've been talking about, geoengineered heat waves, geoengineered wind storms on top of fires, and we can make it rain. And we don't. So all these things need to be discussed before we are put in a long spell by demons that are going to tell us that we need that climate change. Climate change is such a fucking trigger word in and of itself. But yeah, I really thought you guys would love this headline when I saw it. So I grabbed it. It's really it. crazy, man. It, it's and, and like you said, it, it it is kind of it is funny. The first thing I see, like I saw it right away. You know, it's, it has a lot to do with the sun. The it's time. the demon of many names, as uh, I talked to you about on the phone earlier, because it's calling in all of these different aspects of that one, that one uh, demiurgic, egregore like character. But yeah, go ahead, Dylan. This is this is crazy. Well, I just imagine like I just imagine uh, BB doing an impression of the guy like writing that going, oh yeah i'm squirting oh yeah casting long spells heat waves oh you know like these people i also noticed it was the word blistering you know what i mean it's like these people are literally viral infections if viruses even exist which they i don't i don't think they do i think it's i think it's what people say they are that are that have looked into this and in their exosomes it's like a cleaning process you know like nothing your body does is bad and uh, I just think, as Matt was showing us very clearly, it's it's laughable. You literally can't beat any of these. They're so obsessed that it's kind of like you don't have to know this stuff. But if you don't, you can't see how they're fucking your life up in every single way. And this is not funny. Like, they're destroying. I mean, I lost both of my jobs got taken away. I mean, I literally just I was about to find start making around like a hundred grand a year and just working and saving money so I can buy land and get the fuck out of here. And now um, that was taken from me. So they've destroyed all of a lot of our lives. And this is going to probably be the worst his, uh, um, winter in American history. So as funny as this is, we need to prep for, you know, I mean, if you can, I've been checking the websites every day to get, uh, bigger magazine clips because i can't buy big magazine clips fast enough and uh people need to prep guns uh get yourself some precious metals if you can storable food is big right now because you don't know what's going to happen there's a, there's a guy named ice age farmer i don't know if you've uh, looked into him he's got a great channel and he has been really highlighting the food shortage that's being artificially induced and like they're destroying farms over this fake virus. And this is serious. This is going to really impact us. And so you need to buy storable food while you still have wealth. Uh, I would be, I already went and bought some. There's look, people need to look into this. It's called Cryptek. It's K R Y P T E K. And they have really good winter hunting clothes. And whether you hunt or not is irrelevant. They're tested by special forces and you can wear them in, in winter climates because real talk, there might be. Uh, an American revolution come this winter because people aren't going to be sitting around and letting their children go hungry because you shut their business down. And uh, that's what people are not seeing. And that might even be what the powers that be want to have happen. But what are you going to do? You have to be out in the wilderness in the wintertime, whether it's fighting, whether it's surviving, you want to have warm clothes, or even if they turn off your heat or you run out of money to pay the oil, you know? So People need to start prepping because we don't know what's going to happen. We're in uncharted territory. I feel like, hold on a second, Matt. Sorry. This is a good question for both of you guys. But all right. There's a certain section of people that would hear the snippet of what we just talked about and be like, oh, I'm turning this off. It's too negative. And look, if, if you thought that, I'm not making fun of you right now. But what I want to point out is that what you guys are describing is what real sovereignty actually is. What the price of freedom actually is, is being fully prepared to take 100% of the responsibility for your own survival and well-being and all of the above. And, and we are super far from that, most of us, and the things in society we're dependent on. And it doesn't make you a negative person to know that you actually need to be prepared for that stuff. It's like the highest level of positivity to be uh, closer to full self-reliance. Yep. I think it's especially important to arm yourself with the tools of survival, such as the knowledge to be able to grow food and what like and whatnot. Um, as far as being strapped goes, 
I opted for moving out into the country. Um, I, I'm surrounded by farms. I know when there's a food shortage in the city, it's going to be an interesting uh, debacle. But I like this opportunity to segue into the Traveling Truth box, which has now evolved into the Traveling Truth Library. Because if we're going to bring knowledge to the next generation, what have you, how are we going to do that with no libraries, censored internet, and no bookstores and what have you? Because a lot of these things are being shut down. I'm even seeing images of books being thrown away because people have touched them and all this stuff. And everything's going digital and things are being severely, severely censored. So... When, um, and I'm just going to go on a little tangent for a second because I want to talk about this, this truth box. But this thing isn't about me. It's about truth and it's about, um, media and books. And I want everyone to kind of get excited and inspired and empowered. And we can all be in on this because it's going to go around to everybody. It's going to be really cool. So when the pandemic thing started, I actually was living with some younger children and all of a sudden these children had no access to libraries or bookstores anything telling a six-year-old or an eight-year-old to just do all your learning on the internet is not cool it's nothing like they were just used to a few months ago they have pictures tangible stuff so i saw in this nice neighborhood these little boxes that have like books in them which is really cool if you have a nice neighborhood and they have these little boxes in the neighborhood and people kind of add and take from them and i was like oh i want to make one of these but have it be truth only and then I was like, yeah, but are these bozos in my neighborhood? And I was like, I'm not going to get a good enough reach, you know? But that was kind of myopic thinking. I'm sure there was amazing people in the neighborhood that would have loved the little tangible book box thing right there. But I decided to make a traveling library of media of truth, okay? Because the U.S. Postal Service, if you're mailing just media, you can do it for at least really cheap. So I started making this box. And now the box is done. And I'm going to send it on to people. And people are going to add to it and take from it and send it on. It's going to travel around the United States, and it's called the Traveling Truth Box Library Project. The Traveling <laughs> Truth Library Project, whatever it is. And I'm going to go through all the components of it really quick, and I'd love you guys' input on it. And some of these, like, people refer, people have told me, hey, you got to include this, and so I include it, and I haven't even read it or anything. But it's media, and it's truth-oriented, and it's exciting. So first and foremost, I have this book in here by... By Dylan, and it's great, and it's in here. It made the cut. That's how good it is. Everyone should have this on their bookshelf. Okay, Spirit World. Dude, it's such it a steal. For awesome. It's ten bucks. Like, how could you, how could you really go wrong? I mean, it's such an amazing investment. What? I paid twenty for mine. I'm just kidding. I don't know. I think it. Is. Okay, the four agreements. Check it out. Yeah. Behold, right. behold a pale horse. Okay. Oh, By Bill Cooper. All right. Interesting. You want to hear a funny story about that book? Uh, Talk to me. So that, that was part of like the quote-unquote awakening process. I was working on that movie, uh, Angels and Demons, for like a month. And uh, somebody told me about that book. And his uncle like worked for the CIA or something. And there was like all this mythology, like urban legends surrounding that book. Like if you rented it from the library or if you bought it, you went on like an in instant watch list. <laughs> awesome. And so I remember telling my friend, about it and my friend being the guy that he is just went and friggin downloaded it for free and then emailed it to me i was like what the fuck are you doing i don't want to be on a watch list <laughs> and so but you know curiosity got the uh you know gets the cat whatever so i ended up reading it and uh you know i have i have interesting i have mixed feelings about that because he walked back a lot of his ufology and all that stuff like a lot of, you know in the the protocols of the elders Zion or whatever it was called, that was James Corbett did a really good job debunking that. That was plagiarized a lot. So they mixed in that. Not saying that it's not true, but if it's not an original, you know, there's some stuff in it that you just gotta be careful that you don't let it get you like really negative, like, you know, disempower yourself by thinking it's like this vast conspiracy that there's no hope for you, you know. That's what I got from that. So that's a dangerous one for me. Awesome. I got triggered, I I got triggered watching. In the, I love in the chat, Francisco Quizada said that that's the book that woke him. So <laughs> I love that Dylan uh, wrote the first one. He had read the second one and he read the third one as well. And Dylan, um, I love that you were like, I don't want to be on a watch list. And then fast forward, what, like a decade now. And you're like, yo, I'm on a watch list, dog. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I bet you're like that. Yeah, least, man. Uh, I'm that guy that like anybody assigned to me 
at some point, you're just going to be like, it, what I say is going to make so much sense to you that you probably become my friend. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't have yeah. enemies. I don't. You might, somebody might, I might block somebody. I might not like somebody or want them in my life, but generally I don't have an angle. Like I'm not, I'm not here to target anybody. I think like we are all responsible for this situation. And the only way we get out of this situation is together. We don't get out by one person going off and surviving in the wilderness. We don't get out. You know, it's like we have to raise the collective consciousness together. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Because I think, uh, it, it, as Mark Passio says, we live in this. The way consciousness works is a certain amount of people have to be aware of something before it spreads. You know, and that's kind of like some of our founding fathers. You have to just keep stoking those brush fires in the minds of men. And that's how you, you do it. You're a G. I love you. We're best friends. Okay. So <laughs> George Orwell, 1984, of course. George not, Orwell, not Animal message. Farm. <laughs> Animal Farm. Dude, this one's nice and short. This is, this is my style of a book, dude. Animal Farm, short and sweet, causes revolution, banned in countries because it disrupts total government. Amazing. Hey, Matt. Um, this movie. About the book that Matt, I know. Real quick, real quick, the book, like the, the book burnings and the getting us into this digital system, they can do what they did in Animal Farm and just change everything as they see fit. Mm -hmm. And that's and why you need, you need physical copies of everybody. I don't care if it's my work. Whatever you buy, get physical copies because we don't know how long the stuff's going to uh, it's going to last. We might not have access to some of the stuff we assume we're going to have access to. Dude, you know what they say about assumptions. They make an ass out of you and me. But for real, every time I buy something physical, every time I buy something physical, I'm like, after the big war and after they delete everything, this book is going to be like buried under a rock. And somebody's going to find it and it's going to change the world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But either way, this is a DVD. It's in there. My movie. Hey, uh, hit me up with your address. I'll send it to you, Dylan, for free. Have happily. Okay. DVD, Frankest Guys the Movie. Check it out, FrankestGuysTheMovie.com, FrankestGuysTwo.com. I just got that going. We're going to make a, a second movie. It's going to be amazing. If y'all haven't seen this, this movie is amazing. Dark City. Such I don't a good think I've movie. seen that. Oh, brother. I'm going to have to send you the whole box. I mean, just look at the imagery on the front. It's the guy laid out across the clock, which is another way of uh, picturing the Zodiac or, or Kronos, the thing we've been talking about. Yep. They These aliens... Movies. These aliens are taking people and changing their memories every night, and they'll make someone a serial killer that wasn't a serial killer the night before to see if humans have souls. It's amazing. A cult, wow. cult, sorry, cult classic. Great movie. While we're at it, they live. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, I can't bear to chew bubblegum and kick some ass, and I'm on a lot of bubblegum. Yo, one of the best fight scenes ever in any movie, you guys. What a great it's movie. It's hard to watch. Once you watch this, Oh, it's something. And once you see the movie, then you'll start watching the news. You'll start watching, getting, watching the media headlines. It was completely different lens. Amazing. Interestingly um, enough, that, that movie had a, almost like a same psychological effect that that movie Idiocracy had. You guys ever seen Idiocracy? Never it. saw Idiocracy. It's supposed to be funny, but when you watch it and see how like accurate it is, it's probably one of the most terrifying movies. Like, I really feel unsettled after I watch that. And that's kind of how I felt about they were. It's like it really is. Like, have you guys ever heard of that website? If you haven't, it's called it's this called it's called this person does not exist dot com. I strongly recommend everybody who's watching right now in a different window type in this person does not exist dot com. And every time you refresh it, it generates a new image of a person that doesn't exist, but it looks like a real person. It looks like a real photo. You can't tell it's not real. And I wonder. If that they live stuff is starting to like happen, but only at like a digital AI level, some of the people we think exist are just computer AI simulation programs that we're watching on the news every night. I'm not I'm not saying that that's what's happening, but it, it, the technology is getting there. Well, I go on my Facebook almost every day, and I have to block people who are not real that are just like they don't have souls. They're like some robot or something like that. So I don't mm -hmm. doubt that at all. And that's in the in the stream right now, guys. Uh, I'm just on that website and I screen shared it. You guys aren't seeing what I'm seeing, but I'm refreshing on that website you're talking about. It makes some mistakes, but most of the time it's really freaky real. Uh, I've been showing people this person does not exist since you turned me on to it. And yeah, I just demonstrated photos of 
10 people and they were all passable except a couple. I mean, it's, you can, <laughs> it's just creepy, man. Like, uh, I also have uh, shown people a video before of Neo in the Matrix being replaced by Will Smith and they seamlessly just like machine in uh, Will Smith as the main character in the Matrix instead of Keanu Reeves. And it's super creepy. And they, it's going to be like a Mandela effect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, who knows what is really possible if that's the kind of stuff you can do on the internet with uh, this person does not exist. And you can also do it with voices too. I've heard people like Jordan Peterson have their voice completely AI crafted where you just type in a sentence and it repeats it out loud with his voice. I mean, at this point, Matt, me and you would definitely have done enough talking online that um, one of these AIs that does this could easily replicate us and make us say anything it wanted. So it's pretty weird. We're moving into strange times. Spiders. They're going to bite our everything. Um, fluoride, the aging factor, amazing book. Got to have it. Fluoride is poison. It's in the tap water. Um, Noam Chomsky. Yeah, it is. Noam Chomsky, media control. Fluoride and aluminum work together, and knowing about both is important because if you know how they mix together in your brain to cause Alzheimer's and dementia. So this media control, it's a short book, but Noam Chomsky is basically like, yeah, as long as we control the media, we can control the way you perceive things. Like when we went to the Persian Gulf, we didn't really have to do that, but we convinced the nation first that we had to and blah, blah, blah. Pretty interesting. You seen this movie, Blade Runner? No. Somehow, no. I've never actually seen it. I know a lot about it. Guys. Guys, okay, so the book I have not read, but it's a classic, and um, it's Harrison Ford, and he's hunting cyborgs because he's like the detective who can see in their eyes and tell who's a cyborg and who's not. But then later in the movie, he learns that he's actually a cyborg too. <laughs> this, yeah. um, this book someone sent me, Kundalini, it's um, exploring the fire of life. It, it really has nothing to do with sexual energy, and this book is stacked. Actually, Dylan, I want to send it to you. You would love it. It's it's amazing. Got to have it. Um, yeah, the Kundalini is a wild experience. Ever had. It's, you don't need to. It doesn't. It's not. A, it doesn't have to be a sexual thing at all to have it. What I'm really excited about learning about herbs, and I think that this weird world we're entering, we need to learn more and more about, like just harvesting from the earth and learning how to grow, learning what's around it and what's edible. I was walking through the forest That's for the years genius. around here. Yes, exactly. I was walking through the forest around here and i never knew what was there and now i do and it's unreal i gave this book to a buddy of mine and it's rocking his world it's introductory for some oh, yeah, but yeah. literally masaru emoto will change your life if you're willing and if you're at that introductory level because frequency is real words are powerful so powerful dylan can tell you over and over but this book is actually nice and it's got pictures in it and i love it and masaru emoto i heard was killed by the and he's government because he was so amazing. But he is dead. Rest in peace. So on the subject of cymatics, there's a recent episode of Crow Triple Seven podcast where they get into cymatics. And it was a really interesting conversation, especially looking at the basically magical properties of water. So, man, this is a stacked box, Matt. I don't even think you're halfway through it. <laughs> so much, um, so much in there. Edward Bernays. Edward Bernays, the nephew of Sigmund Freud, he wrote the book on crystallizing public opinion, really important nowadays, a book called Manufacturing Consent by um, Edward Herman and Noam Chomsky. Like literally these people are writing books on how to convince you how to think certain ways. For real quick, back to Bernays. Yeah. Back to Bernays real quick. Yeah, yeah. Did you know his, I think it's his nephew, is one of the co-founders of Netflix. Oh, genius. I bet. Dude, I've done some research on Bernays and it blows my mind. He created the slogan, um, the Great American Breakfast. He was hired by yeah. the bacon people. He was hired by the bacon people to get people he to got eat. got women smoking too. He was hired by the cigarette people to get people smoking and to get women smoking. He was hired by the fluoride people to get fluoride and tell people it's good for you. He was hired by the doctors to say, to, can, to make the slogan, trust your doctor. And, and told him, oh, just all of you wear white coats. I'll put the slogan up, trust your doctor, and you're the in white coat, and no one will think otherwise, because he's just so smart. Four arguments for the elimination of television. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Speaks for I mean, itself, I right? It. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? 
Taming the Tiger Within, acclaimed scholar, peace activist, and Buddhist master. Bitch, not con. You know, got to include some stuff like that. Brave New World. I'm revisiting some of these books that I was supposed to read in high school. I think we're getting closer to that than before. Absolutely. The pharmaceutical side is so crazy. Yeah, and just destroying the family. Everybody's so, like, not special. where Everybody's just, like, hooking up with everybody. It's kind of just like this homogenous, like, kind of reminds me of Gattaca a little bit. Gattaca is my favorite. Yeah. But nice. Gattaca is kind of like showing like how you can transcend that, like the heart. There's nothing that can measure the heart. You know? There's nobody that can estimate the, how much the heart can invoke. And so it's not negative. But Brave New World, I feel like that's where we're at more so than I yeah, I want to say hi to a couple of people in the chat, too. First of all, uh, Corinne Wilson, a.k.a. Occult Priestess, awesome homie of mine out there, tuning into the stream, left a lot of great comments on things we've been talking about. Uh, Speaking of heart, for French, well, that comes from Latin. Yeah, ex- for, yeah, there we go. I did. That know, segue was totally on purpose. <laughs> but I'll, you may <laughs> Exactly. Uh, also, uh, you have... Sunny from Australia saying, "What's up to you, Dylan?" What's up, Sunny? We, uh, Sunny and I play modern warfare together and kill motherfuckers. On <laughs> Sweet. And there, David sorry. says, "What's up?" So does John Palakis. What's up, you guys? And yeah, oh, John, it's nice to have people actually in here tuning in. So, and John is like, uh, John has gotten more people probably to read my book in Australia than anybody else. Well, good, man. He's doing a good thing, man. <laughs> yeah, they, they need it down there. Fuck, that place is looking like like one step away from getting on the car or the trains. Yeah, I did need are they like actually mandating the uh V X? There was there they tried well, they were talking about it, but the people pushed back. There was like a poll and like I think it, the overwhelming majority is not gonna put up with that. But I think this whole plan is moving you know, too fast. It's not, I don't think it's working oh, yeah. out. <laughs> I mean, it really, it really, you know, regardless of whether it's real or not, those WikiLeaks dumps threw a huge wrench into a lot of stuff because right from there was like, oh my God, don't look at the WikiLeaks, Russia collusion, all this other garbage on top of it. And it's like they're moving too fast because the plan wasn't going along fast enough. You know what I mean? And it's like they kind of overplayed their hand. Like they don't have, they're playing like they got like a royal flush in poker, betting big, you know, getting the pot nice and big. But they they really have like seven three off suit, and it's just like no cards. It's all fake. That's how it's always been, right? The whole thing is about fictions trying to control reality. <laughs> House of Cards. Yeah. Matt, what's next in the box, buddy? Hey, I can't wait to see it all crumble in their face. I think that the more they push the more people are opening their eyes. I've heard people just out and about saying the phrase over and over. Well, it wouldn't surprise me. Like people are starting to see the cracks, even people that never before would have even watched the movie Frankenstein. I approached them now with my flyer and I'm like, hey, the government controls the weather. I made a movie starts in 1920, Frankenstein. And I'm like, the government, and then they're like, oh, the government controls the weather. Wouldn't surprise me. You know, like you, like nothing would surprise me nowadays. What they say, nothing would surprise me nowadays. So moving on, Arthur Furstenberg wrote a book, "The Invisible Rainbow: A History of Electricity and Life." It's 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 actually um, shaping up to be an amazing book. This Arthur Furstenberg uh, book has been referred to me numerous times. Amazing, gotta have it. Well, here's the deal, though. He's got the globe. I knew you were going to talk bad about it. Why do you think I, I rushed through? <laughs> I, can't, I can't get down with it. Yo, I was trying to hide the cover from you, dude. I was trying to hide the cover from you. It's an older book. Um, yeah, you know, there's lies. NASA's, really NASA's quick, liars, quick, you guys. Let me give one quick shout out. Everybody needs to go to Nathan Oakley, 1980 on YouTube, and also Quantum Eraser on uh, YouTube. These gentlemen have... The best podcast, or not podcast, but live shows. And they bring so much, you know, knowledge and they dispel so many of these hexes. And, it, it, you know, once you dispel these hexes, the world gets awesome. 
Like this world is amazing, you guys. We're not insignificant specks of dust. We're not flying through an infinite universe. There is natural law is a very amazing. This construct is amazing. So I just wanted to say that, like, you know. Yeah, we're not, we're not separate from the force of creation that brought about all of this. And that's the real thing that the Hollywood outer space uh, light speed travel paradigm has made uh, is this idea in, in people's minds that we are just like a random meaningless speck of dust on a speck of dust flying through an empty void with no connection to a higher truth. And actually, th- what we need to realize is that everything in the physical manifest world is a part of this, what you'd call a divine feminine. And in a sense, we're inside of that body of the feminine force of creation in the cosmos inhabiting it with our our spirits and so in that way the world we're in is literally a womb or an egg and it's not by any means uh, a random tornado going through a junkyard uh one in a <laughs> one in infinite chance of putting it all together perfectly like that's the most important thing you don't need to like be sure about your cosmology or the worldview you do have or what you think the universe is you just it's just enough to know that what's coming to you from authority is not the truth. And once you get rid of that, you become open to all kinds of insights and realizations that are going to derive from your own senses and your own inner knowing and those things combined. So anyway, that's a great, great detour. And the Invisible Rainbow, I'll say, I've had that book recommended to me by a gang of people. I've been recommending it to people because I've heard it reviewed thoroughly. So I know it's uh I know it's got some really good information, even if it's got a globe on the front. Maybe it's just I, artistic I, I, license. I yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not acting. Uh, just kind of inviting. For sure. You can see how subtle, you can see how subtle the program is. And, uh, you can't even get one iPhone quality picture of Earth in that capacity. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot there. And it's really fascinating when I was reading your book and you were talking about the um, yin and yang and, and the ebb and flow and the creation of the sine wave. I couldn't help but think about how moonlight, it um, decays, you know, sunlight is life. So it's pretty much this. this Explain that, flow. man. Explain that for people who haven't heard of this, because this is a crazy it's, thing. It's, it's fucking beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, well, the way that I see, okay, this is going to get really deep, but the way that I see Earth is um, it's a projection from the astrology, obviously, down on this, in this realm. And we've got night and day. And, and the, the night light, which is our moonlight, it goes through all of its processions to create a frequency. Um, but it's like, it goes through all of it. It goes through the waxing and waning. It goes to all of its places in the sky. And that creates like this nighttime frequency light that is actually, um, necro, uh, it, it decomposes. It's a cold light, the opposite Putrefied. of the yellow light. Yeah. Put- it putrefies. Okay. And so then on top the of that. The ancients knew you didn't leave your, your knives or your swords out in the moonlight because it actually dulls metal too. Amazing. So then on top of that, you've got the sunlight. So whenever there's not the night, there's the, there's the day. And the sun, it goes through its phases too. We don't see the sun's phases as much as we see the moon, but there are phases. And both of those phases and those opposite light codes, they create this overarching frequency code on Earth that I feel triggers our download codes to create this ascension code to slowly evolve us, to experience physicality, to shed karma, to eventually... Uh, leave materialism and 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 this like code is there that to slowly let us uh ascend and that's why they junk it up with the chemtrails and they try to block it and they work so hard poisoning us and creating all these different uh, maritime laws and all this crap on top of it and, and we're the powerful ones that are like the light codes come through us and we project for our third eye the reality we are creating our collective reality together right so it's so important to keep us astray and to keep us the slaves, to confuse us and all these things all at the same time. So it's really important to, to see the light in the sky as like something really personal, I feel. Um, and right now we're in a new moon. And brother, I love how it's in the back of your first book, it's about the author and it's just your natal chart, right? And you're a Leo. You're a Leo. And today um, is a new moon in Leo, I believe, which is very powerful. 
helpful for you in self reflection and kind of all that stuff. How old are you? Do you mind my asking? Yeah, I uh, just turned 37, July 23rd. Cool. So, oh, 23rd. Is that a class? Yeah, it's uh, I'm the, literally in the first degree of Rio. Cool. I'm October 23rd, so I'm a cusper. Dude, me too. I'm on the first degree of Aries. And Leo is my rising sign. So we got a lot of fire energy. And, uh, Hermes. Hermes? Uh, sorry, not Hermes. Mars. Both of you guys. And Mars is in Aries right now, too, by the way. Well, Mars is <laughs> Aries. No, Greek, Greek Aries. So, yeah, we, uh, we've also got... Let's, don't you have a fire sign, Matt? Oh, I'm all fire, bro. If you look at my chart, it's it's nuts. It's like fire, fire. Oh no, it's Scorpio, 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 fire, fire, fire. But um, yeah, I'm October twenty third, nineteen eighty, Denver, Colorado, like nine forty three a.m. or something like that. We were looking at it today, and it's it's all concentrated. It's pretty it's pretty cool. So um, also the movie AI. It's a two hour heart string emotional roller coaster basically convincing you that transhumanism is, is trans, transhumanism is okay and you fall in love with the robot in the end it's, it's all very manipulative predictive programming dystopian future another dystopian future classic by terry terry gilliam brazil okay very neat interesting movie to watch another dystopian future children of men the oh, currency amazing. in the future no one can procreate because the dystopian future we're entering where emf fields and 5g blast you you won't be able to pro- have children. Uh, also, we're like right there. Yeah, we're almost there. The Handmaid's Tale. The only currency is fertility, and hardly anybody can have children. And oh my gosh, have you guys seen this movie? They're, they rock this dystopian. This movie is unbelievable. You have to check it out. I'm happy to send it to you as well. They're, they're all throughout the, the movie is dystopian. This dystopian flag that's the U.S. flag cut in half, and on the other side of the half is a black Illuminati triangle with an eye in it. And this like crazy evangelical dystopian government has taken over. And the only currency is sex and uh, fertility. And only like a dozen women can procreate because they don't know why. But it's, come on, man. It's, it's a programming. <laughs> like thing, like idiocracy. Like programming. Just like it. Crops of catering. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, electrical lights. It gives you whatever wings. Um, propaganda. Edward Bernays. And... This is a book called Propaganda by Edward Bernays. He's like, I wrote the book on propaganda. Here's what I do to convince you guys. He talks about the invisible government. It's right in your face. And people literally read it and they say, oh, this is how my taste buds are literally created. Not just manipulated, but created. And last but not least, this album, Rage Uh, Against the Machine. Take me back to sixth grade. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. baby. I love it. Actual CD. If you have a CD player, you can listen to it in your in your car. You crank it. Like half the people that get that are gonna be like, "What is that?" <laughs> I love it. Well, they can figure out what to do with it when they have it. But this album is like some is this album is something special to me. Like when I'm about to do a speech or something like that, some people like get all zinned out. I just like I drink it just like crank that stuff, and I'm like on a high yeah. divine. Like, it's something really special. Um, they really emphasize, like, speaking your truth and, you know, the world that we live in and what have you. But I think... Matt, this put that music on a flash drive. Just get a bunch of albums on there. Put the whole Rage discography there. Yeah, but this is this is tangible, dude. Uh, I know. About the physical stuff. But at least sort of tangible. It's on a physical, external drive. <laughs> but yeah, dude, no. Yeah, this I is a great to, box. Uh, I went to... Either way, the box is and it's basically without it's basically rage without without the lead singer but chris cornell man that guy is like a rock like that's the only guy i've ever looked at like man he's a rock star like they friggin they were unbelievable love man one of the things i really liked in your book dylan was when you explained the rock star archetype how it pertains back to all the different like solar deities it's really amazing Sort of Aster. Yeah. And uh, that's the capital of Phoenicia, you know? Zor, anytime you see like the rock, rock symbolism, rock, that's, that's the, their word for, you know, God. Peter, Peter, rock, father, priest of Apollo, Pateres. This goes all the way back to the priest of Amun. Jupiter. Jupiter. So, yeah, Jupiter. Yeah. 
Zeus. Obviously, they say that about about Jesus as well, being the rock. Yeah. Yep. Jesus's name is Bacchus's ancient name. The first three letters. So when you say yes, the affirmative, that's Bacchus. Bacchus in the Greek is Dionysus. So you'd have you see that transliterated in English on the pulpits and the cathedrals of the Catholic Church, IHS. You know, so that's where you get. Well, I don't want. I don't want to go too deep. People get super triggered, but people who are interested in seeing where it comes from, that's where my books would really benefit you. Specifically, book three, if you want to get really deep into that. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the way that you present the information is just plain going to be easier to comprehend from the book because it's not that it's hard to grasp, but it really helps to be able to just look at it on the page in front of you and reread a sentence, reread a paragraph, look at the phonetics sound things out but the what's important here is uh, the idea of the phonetic kabbalah and i never really had this as a term in my wheel uh wheel kit or whatever you say <laughs> wheelhouse toolkit so let, let's be very distinct really quick because a lot of people hear the word kabbalah, and they get the kabbalah yes uh because then they start thinking jewish mysticism when you say phonetic kabbalah it's not spelled that the jewish mysticism way it's kabbalah as in C A B A L A, which comes from horse, caballus. And that's why in uh, Spanish, Espanol is uh, caballo. Or if you're in Argentina where it's Italian, it's caballo. You know? <laughs> so it's horse. And so Kabbalah that way, that's, that's the derivative of it, just to make sure people aren't like freaking out. Because, you know, there's going to be some people that might see this and be like, oh my God, they're talking about Satanism and it's the devil worship. And, you know, the phonetic Kabbalah has nothing to do with the Kabbalah in that capacity. So, yeah, what, I mean, what it is, is the ability to use the actual phonetic sounds of different words and especially in mythology, but in language period, it has a lot to do with green language, which we talk about on the podcast all the time. Uh, the ability to actually like look deeper than the basic definition of a word. And <laughs> man, it, as soon as you start looking for the deeper meaning of a word or the alternate meaning is breaking about the parts you it it's like every time you do it to a word you're like holy shit i can't believe i never thought about that word that way that word actually makes sense now and like for example i bring this up all the time because i read it in your book but even dictionaries it has diction and aries and that phrase alone has a lot of importance to why we get our definitions from dictionaries and why that's the authority they dictate it to us and to dictate, it's to constantly repeat stuff. And that's what they do in life. They repeat the lies until people just get used to repeating the lies and believing that shit. Yeah. I think the worst word that they've done that with, I think the worst word that they've done that with is anarchy. Oh, I know. It's, it's, it's to a point where you can't even really use anarchy. It's better, it's better to let anarchy go and just say voluntary. Because it's hard to, it's hard for somebody to go against if you say, do you believe that all action should be voluntary? If they say yes, then you say, yeah, great, voluntarism, perfect. If they say no, I don't think so, you think you know, someone could just force you to do whatever they want, so rape's okay, and you can just take them down their really logically fallacious path that they're going down. It's embarrassing that they said that, you know, oh, wait, things shouldn't be voluntary. No, that's embarrassing. Once you really get to what that means, they won't still espouse that ideology unless there there's something wrong with them you know right right and anarchy like what happens to me is uh, my own mom she'll throw that word back at me sometimes and she means well but you know she'll be like well so what's going on in portland that's what you want and i'm yeah. just like that exactly is, what I was and that my point is just like it's now associated with panty exactly but the, the real joke is that the government is exactly the armed gang that everyone's afraid would take over in the absence of a government. That is what it is. And in, in relation to other governments in the world, the, uh, they actually are in a state of anarchy amongst each other, more or less. Like anarchy is actually the rule, not the exception. And everything that you think isn't anarchy is fiction, but enough people believe in the fiction that it operates in a certain systemic way. But it never changed the fact that you could actually just do anything good or bad at any time and there would be consequences in some form or another for your actions regardless like it's <laughs> and we already have anarchy and you know for anybody who might be seeing this like you know the first time they've ever seen this anarchy is simply an without archon 
rulers, masters, lords. It doesn't mean no rules. You could still have uh, like some sort of rule of law. That's not. You can still have that within anarchy. It doesn't mean without rules. It just means without rulers. And then that goes to well, who gets to decide what the rules are? And that's when you start questioning and go, yeah, if, if you don't have a right to do something to me on a one-on-one, how do you have a right to get together with a group of people and do something and make all these laws and dictate your whims to us? And they don't have that. In the natural world, it doesn't exist. So that's why God's law, nature, natural law, is the law. And that law is king, Lex Rex. Not man's law. Man's law is sorcery. Yeah, and you really... Matter how well it's made. important to actually have the conceptualization of God more correct too, and not be thinking of like this egregore of the the man in the clouds with the lightning bolt, the Zeus guy, or whatever the old old dude with the beard, and realize what you're talking about is actually nature itself. It's the creative force behind the entire reality we're in, and in that sense, we don't create that reality. We have a power through. Um, our, our, individually, we do have the power to have a lot of effect on that reality and the outcomes in it because we operate from the causal realm, even people that don't realize that they are a cause, not an effect. Humans are causes as much as they are effects. And uh, whenever... Cause is the effect and the effect is the cause. <laughs> and going back to that, like, clarity, duality, relationship, and how everything kind of syncs up with itself. And what I... Reconcile. The way that I really understand... The difference between rights and properties now, uh, thanks a lot to reading Clint Richardson's work and coming across him recently, is that in the legal system, we pretend that we have property, but really that stuff that we pretend that we own is just part of a legal fiction and nobody owns anybody else or any anything other than in a natural sense, like territory that they're living on, they you know, there's something there, but it's not the paper that gives them the right to continue living there unbothered. That's the natural law part. Just like if you came across a bird's nest in a tree, they have the right to continue living in that tree because it was, it's where they're living. It's what they're doing. So it's what they're making use of, you know, it's like that, what you acquire. If you use your body to acquire it, that's your time and attention. That's your work. That's, that's, it's, it's yours because you, either earned it, created it, or you have use of it. <laughs> and so there, there's like this thing, like just basically common sense. Like if, if you, if you built a home, yeah, I get, I get that you don't own the land. Right. But if you're you built a homestead for yourself and you're using that, I mean, it's just common fucking sense. You leave, it's yours. You don't fucking go in there and try to take it from you. Oh, well, you don't technically own this because there is no ownership. In it. No, it's like, all this shit is just common sense and everybody's playing these fucking mind games and word games with themselves to try to like creepily take other people, deprive other people of their rights. And then, you know, like even commerce, commerce is not a bad thing. The rule of law is not necessarily a bad thing. What's bad is that they're using it to then ensnare you into contracts and bind you to terms that you didn't even agree to. It's not fully disclosed. It's not, it's like, I just always imagine it's like, it's like Prince Charles, right? You know, like that. Have you ever heard him speak? It's like, imagine some guy like that or like Stewie from Family Guy, like, you know, like, oh, because you said your name in, in the maritime court, that means you can sent to be governed by a you know? <laughs> retarded, like politically correct, just like it's, it's, we've killed common sense. And the reality is you don't own anything. Nobody owns you. And nobody has a right to dictate their whims to you, no matter how well. And everybody is so busy operating in logical fallacy that they don't recognize that they're all appealing to the future possibility. They're living in fear and they're saying, because this could happen, you need to do this. And that's logically fallacious by definition. And that's our society. That's why we're so fucking retarded. Everything's collapsing. Look around you. Everybody's politically correct. Retarded means slow down. I'm not talking about somebody with a defect in their genome. It means what it means in the dictionary, what it was before you usurped it and assigned it to a person. You know, it's like, it really is. We are at our lowest level as a society and, that, and we're steeped in moral relativism. We don't know the difference between right and wrong, the majority of people. And that's why we are, we are. That's why you don't need to blame the cult. 
You just need to look at us. We're the problem. You put up with this shit and you get what you put up with in life. You get what you tolerate. You tolerate perversion, you're going to get more of it. Evil is not some good looking, well built, powerful individual. Evil is like a gangly, creepy guy that's like, would you like this piece of candy, little boy? And if you're like, yeah, okay, I'll take the candy. It's like, excellent, you know, and then they have all these turns at the candy. Yeah, you got to let the vampire in. Is. Yeah. But if everyone's just like, get the fuck out of here, you fucking creep. I don't want anything to do with you. Get your ass out of here. We need to bring back banishment. You know? Get the fuck out of here. Go go to some country that tolerates that. It ain't us. Yeah, like... But that's why I can't do what Matt does. Matt is very diplomatic. Guy, you got to talk to people. I can't. Uh, me, I write my books and that's it. I can't. I get to, I go, I get going. You know? It's not productive. I go from one to a hundred like that. Oh, believe me, you. I've got my frustrations with the public. That's for <laughs> sure. But it's, it's baby steps, bro. Like, I mean, I normally, I almost took off the head of the first person I tried to hand a flyer to, but that was like eight years ago now. You know what I'm saying? Now I keep it really short and sweet. I just say Frank Guy's free movie. And by the time they think of the word free, I've like handed yeah. it to the second flyer and I'm running away from them kind of thing. But I also look people. I look people deep in their eyes and their soul and I find the right people, bro. I'm like, fishing out my tribe nowadays i don't want to take any bullshit but i feel you and thanks for like seeing that i'm out there in the world because it ain't easy i'm gonna read a quote from page 141 in this book spirit world no don't follow us don't believe us don't serve us take up your cross your conscious mind and serve truth so you can eradicate the demonic infestation that has ravaged our paradisiacal world I love it, bro. So the construct is perfect. It is not a prison like the current versus brethren view. It is. Okay, look, here's the deal. We have truth right in our face, people. And the powers that be want to do everything to deceive us. But they also hide right in plain sight, all of it, because they have these karmic laws they have to live by. And they're like, just like you said, Stewie. They're like, oh, but we told them the truth through our predictive programming films and everything. They just didn't yeah. see the writing on the walls. You know what I'm saying? One of them that I think is kind of hilarious is Superman. I was like, really? I, when I got into breaking down words, I had some Rastafarian, like, gangster ass friends. And they wouldn't say the word you. They wouldn't say the word dedicate. They said dedicate instead because they don't want to say the word dead in front of their word for commitment. They wouldn't say understand. They say overstand. There's all these words that they just wouldn't even say. I'm like, dang, you got to really think every time you say stuff to not say the word you and all these things, you know? So I started kind of playing with it and really observing. And when I watched Superman through this new lens, it was unbelievable, bro. It was like they were telling us. Clark Kent, he represents the news even. And he's a geek with glasses on. But when he abandons his legal name, Clark Kent in lowercase, right? He abandons his legal name, adopts this new identity, the new name, Superman. All caps. First name Super, last name Man. And he puts on the cape just, just to convince himself even more that he's abandoned that old identity that has that maritime law of curse attached to it, blah, 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 blah. And then he is so powerful, he can, you know, except for kryptonite, but whatever. He's the man, right? And it's just this allegory showing us that we're all that powerful if we can let go of our our cursed little stock market name that they when we get out of the the right when we come out of the birth canal they stamp our feet and all this stuff and like i said check out his book it talks so much about this stuff and it gets really deep but i thought it was pretty fascinating how we are so powerful bro that they have to tell us the truth too so they trick us because they want us to think that we're dumb and there's all these things. There's this quote that I always like to say. You can either take authority as the truth or you can take truth as the authority. It's up to you. And literally, once you start resonating, once you start to resonate on that frequency of truth, all these other truths just start to become self-evident. Your vibe attracts your tribe. And literally, you're laughing at these idiots for thinking that they could play you because they can't, you know? They, they have to... It's like, it's like when you look at it from a spiritual aspect, the, the, 
the demonic lower vibrational forces. They're castaways and they're children, bro. They're like yeah, little they babies. Like children. And going back to what you said, they 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 need us to create what they want. That's how they sidestep karma. Right? That's why you have like the George Bushes and stuff riding off into the sunset, enjoying old age. George Bush didn't go over war overseas and kill anybody. He tricked the people who did that to go over there and do that. And they thought they were fighting for the country. They didn't realize they were fighting for all these corrupt people. They need us to manifest their reality. Not that they can't do it. They don't have that creative force. And if they were to do the bad things, then they would get that consequence, which they're sidestepping by letting us do it. And I'm um, going back to Superman. I, I'm not like, I don't, I don't, not into that stuff, but just even the word super, super in, in Latin means above. So literally above man. What's above man? The sun. What's the adversary of the sun? Night. Crypto, the hidden night. Kryptonite. And what's interesting too is Superman's the red and the blue costume and the kryptonite is green. So it's almost like a metaphor for the fact that the two polarities of masculine and feminine balance. generate power in balance, but uh, it's negated whenever it's fully brought into vibratory balance, if you will, in the green the green is like the where that where those two polarities meet and settle down into um, stillness, and so he doesn't have the the power anymore. But that's actually also kind of like a trick. It's like tricking you into thinking that the the green part of the spectrum is the bad thing in a way, because that's like what you said. It's the heart, which is true. It's the heart chakra, and the earth is mostly green, and earth and heart have the same letters. Yeah, <laughs> seems to be something there. Yeah. Hey, Dylan, have you ever thought about changing your name? Yeah, for, for a while, but then what's the point? You know, like, I don't, they're, they're, I, it's, the name is irrelevant to me. And like, I, so I love, uh, the reason I want, like, I, I'm so passionate about the arts is because the arts are the, the way to creative processes, magic. Like, there's, you know, people don't understand, like, they're, the difference between high magic and sorcery is very subtle. And the sorcery is using high magic for selfish purposes. But if you were to encode art with what we're doing, and I think a lot of these people in Hollywood sometimes do encode this higher minded stuff. And sorry to go off on a tangent, but like I, I never really thought about changing my name because for me, it wasn't about me. It's about the work. So I'd rather my work be known than my personality or my. And, but everybody told me to change my name. And I was like, what am I going to, it just feels so inauthentic to do that. But like my name is like, a lot of people call me pocket because it's kind of what it means in Italian. Sococcio is like a sack that you'd like carry like gold in or something. You know? So it's like a pocket. So some, so my email, you know, I pocket in it. So people are like, oh, there he is. And they call me pocket. But I, I just don't care enough to change my name. Like it is what it is. Yeah, I feel that too. I kind of had this little thing at first, like, should I change my name, put it in all caps, and then avoid that maritime curse now that I'm aware of it, because there's some stock market that's trading around Matt Landman, uh, and then, you know, all that nonsense, which I encourage people to learn about. But um, but at the end of the day, it's like, who am I going to change it to, bro? Like, I got nothing. Like, yeah, So basically, the idea is, like, I think one of the things that I'm seeing like that, this, this, the community of people that look into this stuff start obsessing in it. And they actually think they're going to go into the rig system and change the rig system or like somehow succeed in the system that's been perfected over centuries. And my work is like, yeah, I'm showing you that there is truth to this. There is a system of using your name against you and it's a SVKB trust, right? But the reality is if we, can raise people's awareness of it, eventually we can just go back to the system for commerce and it being what it what it ought to be. It's just it's a way of tracking what you're doing. Like you do need that commercial system and that name. Like if you're if you have a home, it needs to be set up under a name. It can't just be nothing. If you're hiring someone to do work, the the reason laws start in the first place is people fuck each other over. How many times has somebody done work on someone's house and they don't get paid or someone started work and then they don't get the job and put the money you know there does need to be some sort of accounting but if we raise people's awareness enough then people are just like you know what yeah we've got to just undo all the creepy hidden 
assaulting with contracts. That's the real problem is you can't get as a system to assault you with a contract. Well, because you have a license, that means you're under, or you have a zip code, that means you're under the jurisdiction of D.C. And then we can dream up any crazy slavery law we want. And you're governed by it because you voted, you drive, you know, you're a resident. It's just like, they're play- again, it's that alien. Oh, no, sorry, let me switch to King Charles. You have a zip code that the means covered by the District of Columbia, Dawson and Lisa, who fetties the light. Bro, go fuck yourself. We're done. You know, all people need to just say, fuck you. We're done with you. I bought this. I own it. I don't care what I bought it in. You're not going to do anything about it. And the more people just stop putting up with the bullshit, the more it'll, it'll stop. The problem is people have been corralled into these cities. And in cities, you don't have community. You don't really know your neighbors. So it's kind of just every man for himself. Whereas outside of the cities, it's more community driven. And you get to know and love thy neighbor. And if someone comes fucks with your neighbor, you're going to be like, well, I'm going to go get his back because he would have my back or she would have my back. You know, and I think that's what's interesting. What they've really fucked us out of is families and community. And when I was growing up, like I knew the police officers or I'd get in trouble, get arrested as a kid. And they're like, oh, this motherfucker, I grew up with your father. Okay, you know, they, they there's like, they know whose kid this is. It's like a for child, so I didn't say kid because that's a joke. They know whose son or daughter this is. Them with respect. And I think that's the problem is we have law enforcement instead of police. They've just basically undone common law and common sense and created this crazy, like, it's like anal. It's just like every word means something different to them. And all these people in the truth community which is not the true community at all. I don't consider myself part of that. They're all trying to figure out how they can file the right paperwork and say the right things in court. It's like you're actually assuming that somebody is obsessive as you are about this stuff and that some police officer or law enforcement officer who trained for six months is going to know any of the fucking shit you're talking about. No, he's going to be like, you're crazy. If you don't act the way I want you to act, I'm going to pull your brains out and say it was self-defense. Like, you don't want to deal with that. So the is the point is not to get into their system and the point is not to learn all this occult knowledge so then you can like use it to your advantage to fight fire with fire it's just to learn it so you can actually appreciate what it was really intended to do which was to encode the secrets of nature going back to the moon that moon determines the month boom right the sun determines the day the sun based on where it is in the sky you know what time of day it is based on which side of it you're on you know you are in relation to the equator north out all these things you look at the constellations and which sign the sun's in and the adversaries that you see at night the shatans the satans you know what time of year it is you know when to plant your crops this is the world that god made for us all this other shit this magic that's like trying to fuck with all this stuff and like people it's like it's like the creepy rich yuppie kids found got their way into the mystery schools and then they just started using all this stuff for their thing like boy scout clubs you know and that, it's a damn shame because Knowledge should not be hoarded and given up like that. It needs to be out there, like like available for everybody. Not everybody's going to look into it. But you can't have this like pyramid scheme where somebody above you decides what you're worthy of, what you can do. That's just fucking the same thing with the legal system. That's the problem with this world is it's all these people who think they're higher than, holier than now and just can decide what you're worthy of rather than what your soul is ready for. You know? and, that's, um, I just went on a crazy way. No, no, this is good. This is good. Uh, so I want to unpack a couple of things that you were getting into there because, uh, so correct. Uh, first of all, the opposite of anarchy is what we have right now, which is the system of like managers layered on top of managers on top of bosses. Like everybody, someone's boss and everyone is uh, managed by somebody else. And I saw a billboard in Missouri recently that said the Catholic church under the same management for 2000 years. <laughs> and a lot of what you're talking about finds its way back, like on the legal sense to Vatican city and the triple crown of Baal, which is like London, DC Bail. and uh, Vatican bail. Pronounce, pronounce bail, bail. Right. Why you pay? That's why you pay bail. But bail breach is Lord of the covenant. But what you're talking about with the, the condition of people in cities, which is where, This type of anonymity leads to people feeling disconnected from each other. Like 
they might drive past a car accident or walk past a mugging and just be like, ah, oh, someone else will take care of it, whatever. So it what what the you call them the inversive brethren, which is what like the the wannabe controllers are. I love that phrase for it. Yeah, because they do. They they don't create. They just invert what's already there. They reverse the flow from life to death. And so in nature, actually, anonymity and ambiguity is our default state. It's part of what makes us uh, protected equally under natural law, so to speak, is that like if you saw a raccoon out in the wild, his name isn't Charles. It's he's just an ambiguous raccoon. Or raccoon. Yeah, but like if you bring it into your house, give it a name. Now it's your pet. Now you own it. You're taking care of it, providing for it. You're responsible for it. In much the same way, part of what's been inverted is like we all want to give ourselves a name and having a unique expression in the world. And that's actually natural, like your first name or your Christian name, they say a given name. But uh, the legal system creates the fictional ego identity that's part of what's jacked into the matrix. It gives you all your abilities with government and commerce or your license to do things that might not even be <laughs> totally cool under natural law, but somehow if you have a license, you can do it. And all a license is, it's the ability to do something criminal, really. Yeah, so they've inverted the idea of ambiguity in, this, in the cities. Like the ambiguity is actually a natural thing. Uh, and, you know, we're all the same under God, so to speak, but we're all each unique expressions. But in, in the... Uh, the sense that you're talking about this lack of community, anti-community, that's like the the negative expression of it. I just thought that was kind of an interesting parallel, how that's what we need to work towards changing. And, you know, the transhumanism thing, like getting people more addicted to their devices than ever. <laughs> I say getting people more addicted. The people do it to themselves. I'm one of those people. Like, I definitely get the dopamine hit sometimes. Like, I'm at a stoplight. Just pull out the phone and look at it. Well, guys like us can use this technology for our work to share. I mean, it is a tool. It yeah. It's like a tool, it's just how you use it. But I was, okay, so I was playing Spider Man on PlayStation 4 the other day. I got this game because it's $20. I'm a huge Spider Man fan. There's my great power, great responsibility reminder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but in the very first, like, three minutes of this game, the first time you go swinging on the webs, you swing up to a wall with the all seeing eye triangle graffitied on it just like one of the very first things you see in the game and in the game i mean peter parker or spider-man he's working with the cops he's helping them set up surveillance towers that look like 5g towers on the rooftops of buildings he's uh you're you're actually working for like dr octopus isn't a bad guy yet i guess in this story i haven't gotten very far in it but he's working with uh dr octopus as his day job before he goes villain making cybernetics that will uh, like interface with a person's brain and be controlled like a normal arm. And so of course, technology in that sense, like creating prosthetics and stuff, that's not evil in itself. But the point is there's a lot in just this video game that like, you know, a thousands of 12 year olds are playing that's showing you to worship the person in the white coat. They're the authority. They know stuff. They're uh, the, the holy scientific priest class. It's getting them comfortable with that all seeing eye symbolism in the background everywhere. Uh, that that symbol is also in a scanner darkly, Matt. I, I thought that movie was in your truth box. We should talk about that, too. But anyway, I just went into a lot of stuff there. But that's just one game. I mean, I've thought about if I had all, like all the time in the world, I would make a whole second YouTube channel that was just dedicated to decoding uh, occult symbolism in video games because it is rife in, in the video game industry, which is bigger than Hollywood by a fair share at this point but yeah i'll pass the mic well, they're so obsessed with this shit. Uh, you know just just the fact that they they're the furthest thing from the eye of providence they use that eye of providence but that eye of providence, the unity consciousness they're the furthest thing from it the brahm the cerebrum cerebrum brahma abram it all goes back to india the brahmins and these people are obsessive over shit that they really don't even understand themselves. They're like, they're like, they're like fucking children that got involved with something and they don't even know what the hell they're looking at. They're just using it. It's like, oh, that's that cool way of like communicating. And let's just put this symbolism on every freaking thing we do. And it's, it's, they've destroyed it. They've literally destroyed the symbolism. And to that, to a point where now people, you know, what's funny is in Hollywood, most of the Satanists I, I, I met and people are openly satanic here. They're openly communist. They it's they're they're not ashamed about or 
very open about it, put it that way. Most of them, when you get to know them and get to learn their history, they come from abusive Abrahamic households, whether it's Christian, Jew, Muslim. They, they're like, their react, they became what they were in the darker cult as a result of being so oppressed from the quote unquote good cults, good side of the cult, you know, not realizing they're all the same dialect, it's all the same, it's all the same thing. So just because you see that eye of providence doesn't mean it's evil. It's actually a good symbol for eye of uh, whatever you want to call it, people doing it. It's kind of like the same thing they did with the swastika. That's a that's historically used by American by real Asians over there, you know, it's been used by every culture. Let's, let's call this back to what you're, we are talking about nature and property, right? I want to throw this in. Uh, the other meaning of property is an expression of, or something that something is doing, right? So when we say that you're property of God or property of nature, that's what the all seeing eye in its positive sense is saying is that like, you as a, a conscious being shard of the uh, infinite embodied in, a temporal body, you you're actually like a Mars rover platform for the all the all itself, the uh, the universal yeah. intelligence or God or source, and it's coming through you and it's using your body and like you the sense of I am that you would feel if you took away every aspect of your ego identity is literally what it means when they call God I am. It's that thing. It's like the pure the purest of just the I am with none of the other things attached to it because truth is only understood negatively and that it's only what it isn't and it's how you you know circumscribe the infinite is by ruling out what it's not and any of these nouns <laughs> nouns and names it's not that so it's just the i am and i think that's what the all seeing eye is trying to explain so before they invented it it looked like an eye so it's in the word james i am is s the fire assyria fire I, the one, the heat, S, the fire. It's the sun. So that I, that's the fire, that's it's also a symbol of the sun. That's why they use the King James Bible, like the book of the law, it's the sun. Yeah, and that name had so many morphs into other related names. Like, um, that that's one of the great things about spirit world is you draw all the dots together with the different names of solar deities and show it's like that one same thing uh repeated yep and and that's why i'm not like the thing is is we don't this stuff is like really kind of difficult for the modern mind to look at like the reason the reading the books and going at your own pace is more beneficial than talking about is because when you go through this process like the quote-unquote awakening process or learning it's like holding a mirror up to yourself and you're really only competing with yourself there's nobody else that's your enemy and you're really starting to question your own bullshit. And you start, once you start realizing that you are wrong in a lot of things, then if you're not a psychopath, you want to know what's right. And when you want to know what's right, you're going to go and align with that. And that's how you align with truth. And so when you look at all this, when the priest class, the creative class that designs these mechanisms, you got to remember, they didn't have all these distractions. Anymore. They didn't have Spider-Man. They didn't have Call of Duty. They didn't have movies, entertainment. That's why, like, people a couple centuries ago spoke six languages. I mean, the, the amount of knowledge they had is, it's overwhelming. I mean, it's, it's sometimes it's handicapped. I mean, you can go look at, like, a, a test to exit eighth grade at the turn of the 20th century. And it's like, these, these kids who are, like, 13, 14 years old know more than I do now. Like, common sense stuff that you need to know. And we've lost all that because we've allowed all of our responsibility be assigned to somebody else and that's the problem with our society is we want like we want businesses to be like social justice warriors we want like we want all this shit done for us and it's just it, this is it's it's an extreme abdication of our responsibilities and it goes back to one of voltaire's quotes and it's like in the 1700s he said freedom requires responsibility which is why so many men regret it yeah i say sometimes freedom and is self-mastery like in a way yeah, yes you're responsible for you. Nobody represents you in the natural world. You present yourself only. Chance isn't responsible for me. I'm not responsible for chance. If I say something that offends you, please don't take it out on them. He, we're just meeting for on video, video for the first time. These guys have nothing to do with me. So if I say anything that offends you, please don't take it out on them. <laughs> I present me. That's it. 
I'm my own man, under God. That's it. Nobody else is responsible for me. I don't need a fucking politician, some crooked politician to make laws for me. I'm, I align with that and that's it. Period. That's the end. I think that's the simplest stuff. That is the that's as simple as it needs to be. Like you were saying, we're not going to go like flood the courts with cases that somehow overturn all the tyranny because we know the exact right codes to uh, get through their legal <laughs> black magic. It's just like we just stop participating. We we create other ways of interacting with each other. Are you familiar with Derek Bros and his Freedom Cells movement and the agorism idea? Yeah, he's come across my he's come across my desk. You know, that whole uh, group, you know, I really paid attention to them like maybe like four or five years ago. Not so much anymore. I, I kind of just, I kind of just left everything. Uh, I, I just feel like I just got to go be my own. But yeah, I'm familiar with them. I know well, for, for sure. That's the, the way for you. But I just want to throw them out there as a possible resource for people to look into uh, more deeply into how like maybe you could take action or connect with other people that want to take action that creates more sovereignty in their life because that's one of the like one of the things that they're trying to do is create networks of trade or if you will barter that's outside of the central control centrally controlled systems and that that's going to be the way forward is that we just it's not about tearing anything down that's here Actually, if we try to burn it all down, you get what is going on like in Portland or with uh, other types of bad protests and violent riots. And then you just get in time out from the universe, <laughs> which is more more yeah. slavery. Like, do you think it's going to solve the problem to go like burn down people's businesses or homes just because um, I like it's OK because everyone else is doing it? Violated. Yeah, you. we will get they will get more slavery like that is what will happen. It's just the way it works and internal there's like a cool function in in ourselves that works like internal mastery or sovereignty creates external anarchy which is a state of not having any external masters but if you are internally in a state of anarchy as in you're not your own master that means that externally you'll be under tyranny so it's like as one rises the other falls on the outside so i think dylan oh he cut out for a second but he's still here I'm getting a low low power, twenty percent. Oh, that's better than I thought. I was going to ask, but we're also. But real, real yeah. quick, you said so. Yeah, so the the ruler, what you're talking about, layman's terms, just rulership, rulership of self, or how you already said, mastery of self. Monarch means one archon, monarchy, monarchy, the rulership of one. The real monarchy needs to be within yourself. You need to control of what you think how you feel and then how you allow those uh thoughts and emotions to translate into your behavior or your actions and that's what that unity consciousness is about so you think so you feel so you behave or act and if you want everybody else to do shit for you you're giving up the rulership of the kingdom of self your own internal monarchy and so you're going to have nothing but chaos in the external world. And it's going to manifest in some form of slavery where someone else, yeah, you, you can be nice and safe in the prison. And that's exactly what we've got here. The world is not safe. Safety is an illusion. You're required to be responsible for yourself. And the more we align with morality, don't cause harm, don't steal. Like that shit in Portland could work if everybody was harmonious and not uh, destroying things. But they're, they're, Totally, it's totally contrived, and they're destructors, destroyers. I mean, destructive. And if one one sovereign is powerful, um, like a hundred sovereigns would be, a hundred individuals that were responsible for themselves would be unbelievably powerful. Like, think about if you were busy with your day job and you had all the time in the world, how much could you actually do in terms of growing food, securing a water source, building shelters? Like, just because. Imagine that you don't have the knowledge gap here and that you're with other and now imagine that you're with other people that have some of the knowledge that you're missing and you have some of the knowledge they're missing. It would really like one of the things about the they live allegory that I thought was so powerful for anyone that's seen that movie, the beginning of the movie, I'll explain uh, the main character, Nada. His name is Nada in the credits because he's never given a name, <laughs> which is the divine. That's the divine masculine. He's, he's nothing. And he's also no. He's saying no. 
He says no to evil. As soon as he realizes evil is existing, he starts saying no to it every possible time he can. And that's why in the just like Neo when he stops the bullets. Exactly. That's exactly what the Neo says no whenever he becomes enlightened and stops the bullets. That's his first word. So that's why Mark Passio that's the word of all power. You start saying no to people, you are stopping them, effectually stopping their I do not consent, whatever it is. No. Right. And if they cross the threshold, then they're now incurring the the natural law karmic repercussion of uh, violating your will. And interesting, too, is on is a word for the sun and that's backwards is no. So that's a it's a powerful, yeah. very powerful word. But my my point is that we have we actually have a, a lot of power and the community and they live of homeless people at the beginning of the movie demonstrates that because they've all got nothing. They're living in shanty cardboard boxes and and uh, you know plywood hobbled together. But those people are also like sharing a group meal. They like all kick in to get what little food they can. And I thought about how sad this is. Is people like that in real world situations? They're the ones that are most targeted by the toxic food because they have to get the cheapest food they possibly can. But that was what was beautiful about it. It was all these people that were not you know making it in the system. The system, they were in the system. They didn't have a, a house and a mortgage and credit cards and stuff, but they were all a village. And that's that's really like the natural state of humanity is to operate that way. It, you know, you, you meet an ambiguous person and unless you're traumatized, your first thought is like a positive, like you, you're curious about them. You want to connect with them. Like unless there's some sort of bad energy in between you guys and the air because of one or both of you being unhealthy, our natural state is to actually just functionally coexist together the way you would see, you know, a, a group of... I mean, if it wasn't for government, you could literally have community gardens on every fucking rooftop <clears throat> in every city. Like, there should be not one person going hungry. You could literally be planting fruit trees on every median. Instead, they're planting, like, all these exotic trees. But you could literally plant seeds on every patch of grass that you wanted to in the city and everybody would have abundance. Yeah, if everyone just stopped going to work yeah. and started planting food, <laughs> the winter wouldn't be so bad. <laughs> you could still go to work. Yeah. It doesn't take that much. Like people, I think it was like Henry David Thoreau or something. Uh, someone who grew up where I grew up in the woods and lived in the woods for a while. And he said it really only took like uh, two hours of labor get everything he needed to provide for himself and the rest he had this abundance of like free time yeah so it's like it doesn't take that yeah i mean we be conditioned to think that survival is like a full-time job because of the way that the work works and uh here here's matt with yeah it's henry david thoreau he's got the book in the truth box is yeah <laughs> we haven't let matt speak for a yeah, while kind of, um well i, I had to in there. Matt monopolize, matt monopolize it for a hot so I was really um, thankful that you brought up some of the you can't use the system to take down the system. Really, it's up to us to shine the light on it. You know, that Leonard Cohen quote really resonates with me that it only takes a little crack, right, to let the light in. And then all it takes is that sliver of light and it can fill, it can light up a whole cathedral of dark, you know what I'm saying? So really, we just expose the darkness. Show the light for what it is. Show the darkness for what it is. Bring that truth to people. And the truth literally sets them free. It's amazing. Yeah, I had this little Thoreau. It's got Thoreau shorts in it. I'm reading this one, Solitude. This is a delicious evening when the whole body is one sense and imbibes the light through every pore. I mean, Thoreau is the man, you know? Thoreau is awesome. I'm glad you referenced him because the book was right there and I didn't include it because I didn't want to just like keep on talking. But... I don't have a smartphone, but I do check out you guys' Instagram. Um, really? Yeah, I've got this like little non-radiating little slider phone. I'm mean, even Smart. giving out the slider phones on my Instagram. But I do appreciate you guys' Instagram because I'm so blessed to have a couple friends that are similar vibration right now. If you guys are watching Brant, I'm so thankful for your friendship. But Brant, he shows me Dylan's Instagram on the regular, bro. and it's just like every time he shows me a post, I'm like, yo, me and Dylan are just like, we're thinking the same shit. Sympathetic. It's amazing. Yeah, we're right there. And you realize that once you get on this frequency of truth, 
that literally the the vibration in the universe or the earth or whatever it's like showing everyone the same stuff the same those that are in the know flow together know together flow together (laughs) oh i know what i want to say real quick touch on because like what matt's saying is like you know like once the truth is out there we might have different perceptions of it but there are some irreversible things chance you came to the same conclusion i did when I was researching like the hieroglyphs and stuff and looking at these old works, you know, when we got into the frog and the spiritual darkness, well, I have over a year ago when I was like kind of promoting my work, talking about that whole technique, Pepe the Frog. And then you, who I don't think you had access to my Instagram back then, you, when you were reading my third book, came to the same exact conclusion without me even talking about it. You were like, dude, that's interesting about the frog stuff because that's the whole Pepe and Keck stuff. You know, and we both came to that same conclusion looking at the same dot. So the picture is there if everybody can just kind of get to, you know, if the truth can just be put on the table, we sit at like a round table, we all just look at it, well, then we can talk about it. What do you see, Matt? What do you see? I mean, you know, and I think the more that we can do that, the easier it is to heal the situation. It's very true. Uh, the more grounded conversations that we can have to meet everyone at their level whatever level that may be the more we can have more people have these open conversations on both sides to reveal what truths are to be revealed at this juncture on our timeline where where we're at with what we've got you know what i'm saying and you know from all, i think i can speak for all three of us even though i, I can't but like we don't benefit by disrupting somebody's worldview actually a vitriolic response that we like it's toxic some of the shit that gets said to us you know like if you've been doing any type of stuff for any amount of time you've probably gotten death threats you've gotten everything creepy stuff sent to you who knows but it's like there's no benefit in deceiving somebody if you're not getting paid right and so like we're not getting i'm not getting paid so it's like this doesn't benefit us to disrupt everything you think i like having to tell people that there is no such thing as a virus called SARS CoV 2 that was ever purified, isolated, biochemically analyzed. And thus, you can't even say a virus exists. You I love it. Having to tell people that. I don't like that doesn't make me <laughs> feel good. But the reality is, idiots are trying to now steal my health. Right? Yeah. And it's, it goes back to that consent thing and the word of all power. Put on a mask. Go. Do something about it. Go ahead and test me. Garbage. And I'll show you what I got for you that's me you know what i mean and these people are going to get a rude fucking awakening when it's uh the average person runs out of all these stimulus and stuff and that's why this whole thing was a ruse for them to convert this current system into a more digital system where they use that like blockchain technology these ledgers where nothing escapes the online currency they even tried to sneak it into the first stimulus the u.s digital dollar and so that's where this you're looking at the the virus shit was a smoke screen for them to hide the collapse and the transition of the new monetary system, which will be more centralized control. Everything in your life, and you need to play ball, and if you don't play ball, you can't be in the system. And if you can't be in the system, you're going to starve to death. So that's why what you're talking about with growing things to pe- with people and working with people and getting out of the system, walking away, taking your wealth out of it, not going more into You can't solve digital or digital illusion problems with more digital illusion problems. You have to get out of it and get back to real. Real friends, real skills, real wealth, real community, real everything, real uh, books, real you know, musical instruments. You got everybody today is out of work from this condition because everything that's played on these synthesizers can mimic any sound available. Nobody plays these amazing old instruments anymore. It's like we're losing our skills, our cultures, and all of our ability, all everything, for the sake of convenience. And that's that's like the, you little boy, that's inconvenient. Yeah, just give up that right. Give it up. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yo, I've got a few things to say about this, actually. First of all, you know, I have mixed feelings about the music part of this conversation because I agree that there's something very different about a real instrument, real acoustic sound. There's also an interesting, on an as above, so below level, there's an interesting sort of 
thing happening with electronic music and the liberation of sound where like in 2020 and for the last decade for sure like any sound could possibly happen it's almost like we opened up the doors to the infinite when it comes to music how music could be structured now there that being said it's created a lot of terrible garbage music that's come through those doors but also some really amazing stuff that could have never been innovated before now and and I, like, I think it's symbolic of the type of humanity and the sea level change that's going on for humanity right now that music is liberated in this way. And then when you start to combine that digital side with actual analog instruments, I mean, I know a lot of producers that will like be a one man band now because they can play five different instruments and then use the tech to make it loop. And then they're playing every part and shit's wild. So like, there's a low end of the spectrum, you know, your Skrillex DJ got like satanic I'm garbage. I know, I know you're not, but like, I want to point out the judgment, judgment aside, it's just a matter of what we give up, we're going to lose forever. You know what I mean? Like, more things we don't know how yeah. to do, like, like pretty soon it's going to be like probably like 3D printing everything. And that might be really fun. And like, but what happens if something a catastrophe happens and nobody has those skills anymore. What are they gonna do? Yeah. I don't so know. it's just it's just being aware. Absolutely, being totally, aware. dude. And so what's going on right now with the big sh- shit? Like with with all these shifts and the digital dollar thing you're talking about, I I think that it's like the uh, the West trying to keep up with what the the Chinese have done as far as surveillance. Because if you're going to utilize the AI systems that are now available you need to maximize the amount of data and surveillance you can possibly have. I think a lot of what's going through is to that end because like in China, they've been able to do things like improve the efficiency of traffic in their cities by using AI and, and lights, um, cameras on the stoplights and the AI controls the gating of red and green instead of it being on some sort of timer. And like the efficiency shifts just from when that, that one thing have saved, you know, millions of, or billions of hours for Chinese people, which equates to time is money in their fictional system. So anyway, the point is like, there's always going to be one of these games happening, one of these fictional systems. And right now the game is changing to be one where it's not going to be as fair as, as it was before. It was never exactly fair, but like the musical chairs game, there's a lot of chairs that just got taken out of the game. And so the real key is like, building up that personal sovereignty with, you know, actual resources, access to resources that you can hold on to and real tangible wealth in that sense and your health, which is your greatest wealth. If you have, once you get all that stuff unlocked, then you can go play the game and it's just a game to you. But if you're trying to gamble your life on this game, it's not a good thing, not a good way to go. (laughs) But I think Matt wants to jump in. Yeah, do it, Matt. I just wanted to say, fuck those street lights. <laughs> Yo, they're trying to turn the whole country into China. They're I trying know. to turn the whole world into China. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Like, it's Basically, it's like slow. you can't make the case of, well, you're a slave. You have no idea. You have the greatest hive mind on the planet, but your traffic lights work good. Like, just. Fuck that, dude. I'd rather get back to horses and buggies if I had to do that garbage myself. But that's just myself. And I think as long as freedom is respected, what it, that, that's why it's the solution. Let the people who want to do that do that. If voluntarism is the solution, as long as it's voluntary, then no law, no violation of natural law is occurring. So if you want to give your information, if you want to do that, that's great. If you don't, that's awesome. If you don't want to pay taxes, you don't get to actually participate in the benefits of that system. You know, if you don't want to pay, uh, you know, everything can be done voluntary, voluntarily. That's that's where I'm going. It doesn't have to be this creepy. But well, we need you to pay because if you don't pay, then we can't keep this Ponzi scheme going. It's kind of like the same thing. Well, if you don't wear your mask, I it doesn't work. If you don't get your vaccine, my vaccine doesn't work. It's that same fucking ignoramus dunce, Illuminati of the fucking cesspool of human consciousness mentality that's fucking ruining everything. It's this idea that it's not voluntary. And that's my beef with everything. It's got to be voluntary. Voluntary, I don't care. Do whatever you want. No harm. There it is. I just, 
when Dylan was talking, I just got this uh, quick download that I want to share with everybody. So I think the powers that be, they know what we need as our natural um, evolution, you know, into spirituality, into all these things, natural world, nature, everything. And they simulate it and give us a fabricated digital version of it, essentially, and try to trick us into um, thinking that's what we want or what we need. When really the truth is right before our eyes, right? And if you really tap into your ancestry and get into the direction that your evolution is going, they can't disrupt it at all. So let me just drop a couple inspiring, empowering things because they keep the truth from us. And when we start to really get to know the truth and resonate with the truth, then these truths that are self-evident, they're actually amazing and inspiring. And they get us connected with our ancestors, all this amazing stuff that kind of just gets us on that path again. So one, potatoes grow potatoes. Unreal. Pop, pop a potato in the ground, you grow potatoes in the dirt. Like so many people don't know that. Taking our power back just through knowing these simple things. Also, coriander, that seed that you have in your kitchen, that is a seed that grows cilantro. And then when cilantro at the end of the season goes to seed in the fall, it has all these coriander seeds. Those two, I mean, blows your mind, right? Apple, do you get apple? You take the seed out of it, you cannot grow that same apple with that seed. That seed is a roulette wheel of all the genetics of apples, basically on Earth. It's an amazing, beautiful thing. And humans oh, wow. had to figure out grafting, and Johnny Appleseed was a boozer. Johnny Appleseed was a boozer. It was unreal. Like the history, the history of all this stuff, potatoes were so abundant that the Incans took something that was poisonous, the nightshade, that literally was killing humans. And they're like, no, 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 this is really abundant. We got to eat it. So they bred the poison out of it over centuries and gave us potatoes. We got to get connected to our roots, see who got us to where we're at, our ancestors. And they fought for us to get to where we're at. They died to get us to where we're at. And they want to take that away from us in one generation. And we can't let them do that. Love you guys. 100%. Yeah, this is a good spot to start moving towards the wrap up. I mean, that's uh, powerful. <laughs> Are they, you know, if you believe in such a thing as past lives, then that means that those past lives are the ancestors. You are the ancestors. And so, yeah, do you want to fuck up the progress that we've been working so hard on <laughs> to uh, achieve humanity's freedom to the highest degree possible? Uh, I think that now is the time to get your head out from underwater from the deluge of delusion of the previous age with all the... <laughs> all the def definitions that we've been keeping ourselves stuck within and realize that our real potential is limitless. And that's the real meaning of ambiguous is actually that it's unlimited. That's where your potential is. That's the, your potential is actually the creator. That's what God within you is, is your potential to uh, rise above, to spiritually evolve or <laughs> involve or devolve, what have you. But yeah, uh, Matt, Dylan, you guys have been amazing. I'll give you each plenty of all the time you need to wrap up any loose thoughts you have, but make sure when you do that, you tell people how they can find stuff that you do and connect people with your online presences. If you don't mind, I'll, I'll go first and then I'd like to pass Absolutely. the mic to Dylan. Um, so to wrap on that thought, for instance, the powers that be will literally give you a game, an addictive game called Farmville, and they'll give you this like grounding connection to nature where you're literally on your addictive device getting this like ancestral fix, you know? It's like, oh, you know, this <laughs> this, this feels right. Harvest Moon. Yeah, bro, the Harvest Moon comes in, you get the Dude, I played Harvest everything. Moon a lot when I was a kid. It was like the way I felt okay about not being a... Um, brave enough to talk to real girls and <laughs> talk to fake farm girls and Harvest Moon and Farm Simulator. Like, that's the ultimate proof that video games are a Sisyphean nightmare is that, like, you're literally uh, games nowadays, especially MMOs, it's literally like having a, a second job. You're just grinding. But anyway, sorry to cut in. God. So I'm saying, like, it's so easy for us. We're, it's going to be such an easy transition to go on our path, on our journey in the darkness. The more it shows itself, it's going to be 
an easy transition, but it's like, it's right there in your face. Farmville. I mean, think about it. People are like addicted and the kids are spending all this money on these games. It's because these games take something and replace something that's right there in the natural world. Go put a potato in the ground and get your kids dirty and take the mask off. So my name is Matt Landman. Please find me on Facebook, Matt Landman. Also, I've got a website, Actual Activist, Actual Activist, plural, dot com. Um, I've got an amazing vision for this to have uh, featuring different artists and like Dylan, you were talking about your YouTube uh, channel, people you were um, talking about. I want to feature different actual activists on this site. It's going to be amazing. Also, I made a movie called Franken Skies. Please check it out at frankenskiesthemovie.com. I'm working on Franken Skies 2. Got a little crowdfund for that. Frankenskies2.com. I created a clothing line, Sparrow, S P E R O, which is a Latin word for hope. It's got a big family history. This word Sparrow is the last name. This is my handwriting. I just made this little sigil uh, right here and it's on the clothing. Silver line clothing at sparrowprotectionclothing.com where I'm protecting from EMF radiation, um, hats, baby clothes, stuff on patches, all this other stuff. And what else? What else is going on? Yeah, Chance has one of the blue hats. Um, I encourage people to get active in their local community for 5G, okay? This is coming to your doorstep and you can prevent it from coming to your neighborhood, but you have to ignite and activate, inspire your local politicians. It's amazing. It's an amazing opportunity to talk to your mayor, to talk to the people that represent you on a local level and explain to them what's going on because maybe they don't have the information. But there's a lot of resources out there on 5G, especially at activist. Dot com is a 5G tab there. Um, and yeah, oh, also please on Instagram, please follow uh, Dylan. He'll tell you his Instagram page. Chance, he also has an Instagram page, Interverse, and I have an Instagram page, which is Sparrow Gear, S P E R O Gear. Matt Landman on YouTube too. Holy I'll, crap. I'll drop all your links in, the, uh, in the episode description for people playing this back, not live. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I try to just do work, so I'm out there, but like the clothing line, the movie. If you haven't seen Franken Skies, it's a documentary, chronological timeline documentary starts off in 1922. By the time the movie gets to 1928, it is self-evident that the government controls the weather. We can make it rain. We don't make it rain on forest fires. And everyone needs to know and talk about that, especially coming up as the California fires get intense. We can make it rain on forest fires like that with lasers, technology created a century ago. Thank you so much, Chance. Dylan, amazing to meet you. I hope that we can take yeah, it in likewise, person. Man. We'll speak off. Uh, Chance. Yeah. Cool. It's a pleasure. Thank you for coming in. As for me, uh, I actually don't want anybody to follow me. I'm I'm winding down. I, you know, I've I've been doing this for a long time, so I don't I don't really want my way out there anymore. Not that it ever was really, but um, the best way you could support my work would be to take the journey on my non-fiction series called spirit world which is a spirit and then world is spelled w-h-i-r-l-e-d and then one of the things i'm really passionate about is stories and if you wanted to take a a, a chance on my fantasy series i also have non-fiction fantasy series that's what i'd really like to um to be doing with my life and making my books into films and hiring other artists. I really I'm really passionate about artists. I really if I if I had wealth I'd be like supporting other artists and bringing them higher and allowing them more free time to to, to create beauty and, and I'd like to, you know, contribute to a renaissance and I'd really like to be able to just take care of my community and not really worry about stuff. And the best way to do that would be to support my fictional series too, which is the tale of Onora. Uh Onora is spelled O-N-O-R-A. It's a play on the word honor. And uh, other than that, yeah, hopefully you know, I'm happy to talk to you guys. And, and uh, hopefully we'll do this again sometime. I think Instagram's working on uh, a feature where they'll, they'll allow more than one person to stream with like more than one guest. I mean, uh, right now, yeah, I think you can only do one person at a time, like one or one guest. But I think Instagram's live uh, streams will allow you to connect with more than one person in the future so that might be a really a better platform obviously we'd take that creative uh, profile but uh, i think we'd get to more followers on that because i'm not on facebook i'm i'm, I'm totally winding down my, my social media presence because there really isn't that much to me and i think 
as demand increases, then maybe we'll evaluate that those strategies. But right now, I would just like to leave people with practical, real world um, things that they can do to improve their situation because it's only going to get worse financially. And the best way you can protect yourself is real wealth. And I will say this, and you'll have to research it on your own, but silver is the most undervalued asset in the history of the world. Uh, silver has been suppressed since the crime of 1873, and it's pretty much the Achilles heel of the banking industry, but it has 10,000 uses, more than 10,000 uses. And the best way you could fuck this system over that's depriving you of everything is to take the silver off the market because there's not enough physical silver to go around. So if everybody just went out and bought a few ounces, and started protecting themselves, then we won't be dependent on the final solution that they're going to give us, which is a digital system, which is that kind of key system, that one world system, if you will. So the more of us that are prepared, the more we'll be able to come up with alternative systems based on freedom. And then that is like the bare minimum. You should be doing before all that is get your uh, storable food because the food crisis is going to be intense. And having a million calories of food stored up could be the difference between you surviving a winter and not uh, getting winter clothes if you live in a winter area and being ready for you know not being able to afford maybe utilities if it gets bad enough because we're not going back to normal until the other side of the situation correct and uh, just start looking at other skills another book I'd like to introduce to you is we didn't really talk about this too much but nature survival skills and uh, naked into the wilderness is a great uh, book. Uh, that I would highly recommend. It has basically everything on like how to make fire from scratch, how to make bow drills, all that stuff. How to just how our ancestors survived off harsh conditions. We might experience that before things get good, and hopefully we won't. The worst case scenario, if you're well prepared, is that nothing happens, and then you can just get rid of your preps or give them to the less people, less fortunate people. But how great would it be to be prepared, and then when Someone of your family who wasn't prepared, you can help them. That's going to change someone's life. And uh, we really need to take care of our own because they're coming for America. Like they're really coming for us this time, they're coming for the whole world. So uh, I would definitely just the more independent we are, the more sovereign we can be and the more we can help our communities. And obviously, like Matt was saying, getting into growing, if you have land, you know, get yourself some chicken, right? You have six chickens that lay eggs, you can get over a thousand eggs. Uh, a year and you don't have to cause any harm to the animals and they fertilize the ground and then you can plant in that plot the next spring and have yourself a garden so creating abundance is going to be crucial to our survival if that's what we want if we don't if we want more slavery we'll just continue down this path and they're going to they're going to give us the outcome they want for us and thank you gentlemen for being here. pleasure all right. Well, you know, one way you can get silver is with Matt's Spiro clothes. <laughs> That's a cool parallel that you're both like ending on talking about silver, the silver lining, if you will. But uh, yeah. I mean, even if you are scared of like the, the beer bug, silver is a super great antimicrobial glodial silver immune system booster. But yeah, we'll do something like this again. I'd love to. If if you retire from the internet but keep talking uh, to me, I'll be okay with that. And if you ever want to do a random Instagram live stream, something on your mind, just call, just yeah, call me up like and we'll do it. The only reason I even agree with you is because you supported my work when pretty much nobody, very few people support me. Thank you to those who do. Thank you for supporting that work, right? And taking me through that journey. But you really went above and beyond. And both of you now, like now that you both read it, and what done is displayed or demonstrated that you're using that knowledge and you can see the way you're using it in your your own podcast and that's really what this knowledge is amazing for so it's really rewarding to see other people do that rather than what i usually get out here is oh you're crazy you know like people just think i'm you know some fucking nut it's like it's kind of takes the air out of your sail takes it out of your sail you know? thank you for supporting my work and you know what drew me to agreeing to do this in the first place so i just want to say thank you and it's really exciting to watch you you do your own thing with it and i think you guys will be able to see stuff that i could never dream of seeing because we all see the world differently and so with that knowledge everybody will be able to go into their communities and their own experiences and their own professions and decode everything and see how they're using it 
And that's what's the most rewarding. Yeah, that definitely goes for everyone out there listening. And I would like to think that after this comes out, maybe Dylan's like, maybe there's a market for <laughs> what I'm doing because a bunch of the audience goes and checks out the book because I've told you all about it before. I've read all three books in this series. I will read them again. The first read was just like the dipping my toes in. The next time I read through it, I'm going to be cross-referencing and like taking notes and organizing the information as I go through it and adding my own information to it. And before you know it, I'll have a book ready to go. And that could be, You'll have your own and that's what all of you guys could do if you're interested. But, you know, I majored in creative writing with a minor in analytic film studies. So I'm right there with you guys on the symbolic level and like understanding how, <laughs> understanding how it's encoded in stuff like film. But there, I, I, I want to say before we wrap up that Tale of Honora is really cool as well. And I've, I'm halfway through the first book. It felt like the first, the opening scene, especially, it felt like the beginning of a badass movie. Like you can tell that you write with that language of visual, like the fil- the visual film language is actually in the the prose that you write. So that's really cool and exciting. And I'm ex- I'm really interested in where it goes. And I have no idea how many books you plan to write in that series, but I already know I'm going to be a, a fan of it till it completes. And definitely, we'll keep letting people know about what you do, both of you gentlemen, and. I appreciate the friendship from you guys. I consider you both huge role models, actually. So keep doing your stuff and I'll be in touch. Yeah. And thanks everyone for listening. Yo, Dylan. Yes, sir. Yo, Dylan. Um, yo, Dylan. Hey, brother. People really fucking love you, man. And I've met people in person that you have inspired the shit yes. out of. And when I got when I got your book in the mail, I took a about it first thing and I think it's a chance and I go look right up man and he goes and I showed him my homie and my homie is like yeah I just ordered all three and he goes can I borrow that from you first and I go yeah get it give it back though read it back and then I hit a chance and chance goes yo I could get you a show with Dylan and I told my homie and he was so fucking jealous he told me that you inspired the shit out of him and then dude people Listen, listen, man, you're, you're fucking badass. And, and, and the thing is, is when you're shining that bright, it's fucking intimidating, man. And a lot of people <laughs> will not reach out and tell you straight up, but I'll tell you straight up that you fucking change people's lives. So do whatever you want, but I love you. Yeah, dude. Okay. He's right. He's right. I just about to back up everything Matt said real quick before you talk. And even like, as soon as I posted on Instagram that we were doing the stream, I immediately got a comment from my friend Kalina in uh, Puerto Rico, who said that she knew you personally and that you're an amazing person. And she was so excited that I was talking to you. they're, They're out there. You have a lot more. I think, you know, we all tend to underestimate the power of the silent, quiet supporter. There's a lot of people out there that just are watching and they, they, you know, maybe they don't feel like they can do what you're doing yet. Maybe they're intimidated by what it is that they think you or I do, but they're out there and, and they're benefiting from what you're doing. And like, of course, you have every right to go as private with your life as you want. And I support whatever you want to do. I mean, I love you, man, but you do have a strong, inspiring impact on people. And even, even if you do intimidate a little bit, like, uh, <laughs> it's the yeah, Leo. I'm, I'm different. I'm different in person. Like, you get to know me. I'm usually like I can have a beer. I'm actually an extrovert. People don't realize that. But I talk. I talk to everybody about anything. Uh, but when it comes to these serious matters, like people don't realize, anytime you've had an online presence, you get so much shit from so many toxic people. It's insane. Like I used to have an account that had like seventy thousand subs, and it got it got shadow banned. It went from like having like four hundred thousand impressions to like twelve hundred impressions of me. It totally got new. But oh, really I mean, know what it's like. Like when you go viral for the wrong things and you get the toxic energy, it's very unhealthy. And for me, it's like I'm I'm okay with that if I can have the resources to insulate myself, you know. But I don't have the resources to insulate myself from it. So it's like. I just, you know, for right now, I got to, I, I, there needs to be more demand for my work. Like if it pays me enough where I can actually make a living so I can actually start helping other people, then 
then I'll start contributing more. But right now, my goal is just to find some way where I can be of value to my community. I need to find a new skill set where I actually produce abundance so I can get land, I can grow, and I can take care of my neighbors who are struggling. Because right now, I'm, you know, I, I don't even have jobs anymore. I, I, I have like, you know, 14, you know, a couple months left of unemployment, not even. And after that, thankfully I saved up, but it's going to be a winter that, you know, who knows what's going to happen. So I'm really honored that you guys talked to me. And if this is the last time, so be it. But if not, hopefully we'll get together soon and, you know, we'll, we'll be able to, we'll be able to shoot the shit because it's always fun to talk to people that are in the same, you know, vibing with you and have the same ideas and not, not like we're homogenous or we're all the same, but like just people who you can talk and speak your mind with, whether they agree with you or not, you can still have a conversation and it's not like, Toxic and like you know, people aren't getting triggered when you say stuff. So, so let's do it again. Yeah, let's yeah, just say we're, we're doing it again. Yeah, yeah we'll pick a good time whenever you guys want. For you two, I'll do it. <laughs> not everybody. Not everybody. <laughs> Thanks, man. You know, I don't want to be a fixture in this, <laughs> but for you guys, I would I would go live. But I like live because it, it's living in the moment. It's living and dying in the moment. It's like we get to speak. We all get to harmonate harmonized i would i should say and like speak together and exchange ideas real time there's none of this contrived editing and like how you know there's no it's not none of this is contrived just three dudes shooting the shit and you can either get on board with us or not and it's okay either way hopefully we'll you know find some people that'll look into our work and change some lives or help other people change their own lives because only you can change your yourself or your your situation there it is all right. Well, we'll wrap it up. Thanks, guys. This is amazing. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you, John. Share the uh, video if you guys want to out there, Facebook land or whatever. I'm going to repost it to YouTube as well. All right, guys. Good night.